This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Chicago Cubs faced the Seattle Mariners for a spring training game on March 19, 1977. Chicago was managed by Herman Franks, who had previously led the Giants to several successful 91 seasons in the late 1960s. Franks was replacing the Cubs' previous manager, Jim Marshall, who had very little success in his three years as skipper. The Mariners were in their first ever season as a franchise and were led by manager Daryl Johnston. This audio recording is from the Chicago Radio Broadcast, featuring announcers Lou Boudreaux and Vince Lloyd. How you doing, everybody? Lou Boudreaux with the leadoff man, brought to you by Beacons. Look up your local Beacons agent in your yellow pages, and we'll be talking to our guest, the manager of the Seattle Mariners, Daryl Johnson, in just one minute. Well, after managing a, a team that uh, so-called veterans were sprinkled with uh, uh, a few rookies, such as the uh, Red Sox uh, were in uh, 75 when that great uh, World Series was uh, between uh, the Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. And now, uh, coming along here to an expansion ball club, uh, have you, you changed any philosophy of managing? Well, Lou, I think that, uh, you did what I'm uh, doing right now enough to know that certainly when you're dealing with many young people and inexperienced people as we are dealing with here in this camp compared to the Red Sox, uh, you have to change a few things. I think that you have to uh, double up and almost triple up your fundamentals. Uh, we have a lot more decisions to make on a ball club like this. And again, dealing with young people, I think patience comes into it a little bit more than what would be considered normal uh, because you certainly have to give these young people time to get over the jitters on top of uh, getting them in shape. And uh, I really haven't started judging the people here as fast as I might in an ordinary camp, just giving everybody a chance to play an equal amount of time on the baseball field. And from uh, looking over the box scores, I would say you're very happy with your hitting. Well, Lou, as we come into this thing, the news media asked me about this and this before we ever started, and uh, the power would be our biggest weakness, hitting would be our second weakness, and you know what, they're all calling me uh, something uh, funny names, Lou, as you would well know, because actually, when you come down to it, our hitting has been the strongest part of our ball club at this point. But yet, uh, that may happen in the spring, but once that bell rings, it could be different and you could be right. Lou, when you cross that uh, white stripe for real, things do change, as you well know. And certainly I'm not getting over-enthusiastic about these guys, but it is nice to see these young kids swing the bat the way they have at this point. I noticed uh, in the drafting of the Seattle uh, Ball Club, you did not go to your infield uh, quickly. You went to pitching and outfield. Uh, was that because those were the young uh, fellows available? Well, basically so, Lou. And on top of this, uh, you know we dra drafted uh, Grant Jackson from this uh, Yankee Ball Club. We knew that he was going to be a wanted man by a contending ball clubs. And we drafted him with the full thought of getting two young infielders, which we eventually did in the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yes, you did. And that uh, solidifies that infield with Reynolds, who is a very fine glove man. They tell me, and the reports on him uh, uh, are outstanding, Lou. His, his prospects of being a darn good shortstop, and he's certainly starting to show it to us right now. What about your pitching? Uh, what uh, will be your rotation? Well, Lou, as far as names, I, I can't give you names uh, at this particular time, but I will say this. When I spoke about uh, hitting and power being our weaknesses, I think when we come out of this camp that our pitching will be the strongest part of our ball club. And that, of course, means a great deal that you can be in ball games uh, practically all year if it holds up. Well, we're playing in a big park, Lou, to where power is going to be nullified and the ball doesn't carry in the dome, so I don't think the home run ball for either side is going to enter into it quite as much as the pitching will. And again, hopefully, and the way it looks to me, the pitching should keep us in the ball games a big percent of the time. Actually, then, you and your coaching staff and the organization, uh, they have uh, perhaps divided uh, this year into two seasons. This uh, spring workout is actually uh, a season for fellows trying to make your ball club. Lou, you're exactly right. Uh, our basic part of what we're doing right now is looking at the people to cut us down to 25 people, and it's a competition at every job on this ball field. And we couldn't say for sure right now that any one man has a position sewed up. And competition uh, means so much, as you, uh, you know, in your uh, major league career as a catcher and also as a manager and coach. Well, Lou, you and I would both love to have a situation exist where you've got competition at every job because these people are hauling their cans and they're playing the game as hard as it can be played. And I know uh, as a manager, that's always a joy to behold, and they're, they're really going hard at it. I understand that you have a great uh, following and backing in Seattle when you open up uh, there in the Dome that uh, you perhaps will have a sellout. 
Well, uh, again, I don't know that much, Lou, about ticket sales, although uh, the people that I have talked to from the front office, are they're very enthusiastic, so I know things are going well for us in our opening game up there. And you mentioned to me earlier that you have 19 out of the first 21 or 22 games at home. Is this an advantage to you? Well, Lou, I think with our young people and a, a big percent of never playing on an artificial surface, it will be a decided advantage. Uh, not only do we have two workout days when we get through a spring training, but we play, again, 19 out of 22 games at home, and I like that because we can fundamental our guys in our own park, uh, mornings for night games, and, and really we're going to be still doing fundamentals as we go into our year, and it really is much better to be home to do those things than it is to be on the road. Uh, do you have no goals? How can you set goals in this? tell you what, I, I have a goal, but it doesn't have anything to do with numbers. Uh, every month that we go out to play the game of baseball, I expect us to play better uh, in June than we did in May. I expect us to play better in August than we did in July, and the wins and losses will follow accordingly, in my opinion. And if I know one Daryl Johnson, that's exactly how it's going to happen. You may be able to make the mistake once, but don't do it again. Lou, I'll tell you what. If it don't go the way I'm talking about, I'll find myself a nice golf course and go take a look at that. No, no, you won't do that because uh, starting out with this great expansion uh, ball club and uh, they, we keep saying that there should not be any more expansion because of the uh, qualified ball players. We haven't had enough at major league level. But if you've got hardworking individuals uh, working hard, a youngster can just put out the best of his ability and uh, put on a good show for you. Lou... You know it's so amazing how if you relieve the pressure uh, of a better player in front of you at a position at the big league level, and you're a young man, and let's say that you were playing as a young man center field for the Boston Red Sox at AAA, and you were a good player, but still you can't beat out a Freddie Lynn, and I'm using those names because they come to my mind quickly. You remove that pressure, and it's amazing the way some of these people can walk out there and show you how they can play the game without that pressure, and there's going to be some of these boys that are going to be darn good baseball players. Dale, we want to wish you a lot of luck, and I hope you remain uh, in this uniform for as long as you desire. I feel the same way about it, and I think I might do that, Lou. Thank you. Dale Johnson, fine young manager with the Seattle Mariners, with our guest. We'll be right back after this message. All my husband could say was... We have to be there on Wednesday. So I looked around at the ten biggest interstate movers and found that Beacon Van Lines has the best record in the business for being on time. We have to be there on Wednesday. I know, George. A Beacon Van pulled up to our house right on time, and we were packed and loaded before I knew it. All George could say was... We, we have, have to, to be, be there, there on Wednesday. Wednesday. So I double-checked everything, and sure enough, on Wednesday, there was Beacon's right on time. Hey, what's this? The game was changed to Tuesday? George. Be sure to remember Beacon's Van Lines if your husband's on a schedule. Then Buy him a couple of tickets and send him off to the game. Where's going? What? Just remember, Beacons, and forget your movement. Look up your local Beacons agent in your yellow pages. This has been the leadoff man brought to you by Beacons. Look up your local Beacons agent in your yellow pages. And now stay tuned for Vince Lloyd and today's ball game between the Chicago Cubs and the Seattle Mariners. This is Lou Boudreau. This has been a presentation of WGN Sports. This is WGN Radio Chicago. How much your dollar buys today depends on where you spend it. Take automotive electronics. It's a beautiful day for the ball game. For the ball game today. The band are out to get a ticket or two. From all of our Washington to Calamity. It's a beautiful day for the ball game. The Chicago Cubs are on the air. Good evening, everybody. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau reporting to you today. The Cubs taking on the one of the new expansion teams of the American League, the Mariners from Seattle. And the ball game being played over in the spring exhibition the camp of Seattle at Tempe, Arizona, a little bit south and west of the home base of the Chicago Cubs. And the Cubs have been having a rather rough go of it. Remember the very first game that we saw in broadcast back here in their opening day? They defeated Milwaukee. It's a very fine pitching and a close ball game. But since then, it's not been too good insofar as the Cubs are concerned. After that 2-1 to victory over Milwaukee, they then dropped a 6-3 to decision to them. 
And our next broadcast saw the Cubbies losing to the Giants 10-8. Then to the Giants, 6-2. to two. They beat the, or lost to the Mariners over here at Tempe. Uh, earlier in spring training, by a score of 10-5, to five, they've given up 14 runs to the Indians. Got beat by the Padres a couple of days to go. They'll go 5-4 to four at uh, the Cubs uh, camp in Scottsdale. And yesterday, they were pummeled by the Oakland A's, giving up 17 runs. So the pitching has been a problem. And uh, Ray Burr, since his first two outings, has been hit pretty hard. He has not been getting that ball down. Today, a young man who is hopeful of making the Cubs a starting rotation this year, Mike Kruko, is getting the starting assignment against Seattle. And we are going to have the use of the designated hitter today because we are at the home of this American League ball club. And uh, both teams will be using the DH. Frank McCormick, who last year pitched in the minors at Evansville, a big right-hander, is going to be the starting pitcher for the Mariners. Our broadcast today is brought to us by the G. Heilman Brewing Company from across Wisconsin, the makers of Old Style, the Pure Brewed Beer from God's Country, True Value Hardware. If you use it in, on, or around your home, you'll find it in Payless Board at True Value. General Finances, 65 Chicagoland offices. To borrow up to $10,000, just call friendly Bob Adams at N over 3 2020. And by Fireside, Chrysler Plymouth Mazda. They're located on Golf Road, just west of Route 53 in the Woodfield Shopping Center. Our broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. It is solely for the entertainment of our audience, and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. By the way, while this game is uh, delayed, and you're hearing it a little bit uh, later than it was played out in Arizona today, tomorrow afternoon we will be back at Scottsdale in a live broadcast as the Cubs take on the same ball club do they have back-to-back engagements against one another? The national anthem has already been uh, sung and played here for this game. And they had some special ceremonies prior to the start of the game. They have announced the starting lineups, and we're going to be- give you those lineups as time permits. The umpiring crew is out in the field right now. Larry Barnett from the American League will be working behind the plate. Ed Montague from the National League on the bases. Ron Luciano, the big, colorful American League umpire, also on the bases. And the veteran Johnny Kibler from the National League working the bases. And we'll be back with the starting lineups for the ball game right after this message. On behalf of the American Red Cross, the President of the United States. March is Red Cross Month. Every one of us knows the important work the Red Cross does. Disaster relief, the distribution of blood, service to the armed forces, first aid and water safety instruction, and a wide variety of community health programs. Every day, some vital Red Cross service touches people's lives. But the Red Cross can't do them alone. It needs help. This month, I hope that you will become a Red Cross volunteer. Support your local chapter's membership enrollment drive. And take a few minutes to donate blood. It's easy. I know because I'm a six-gallon donor myself. And I'm giving another pint this month. As honorary chairman of the Red Cross, I urge you to help. For nearly 100 years, America has been counting on the Red Cross. This month, the Red Cross is counting on you. Here's the way the Cubs are to come to the plate uh, in this ball game. Ivan De Jesus will be leading off at shortstop, and that seems to be the spot where you'll see him at Wrigley Field on opening day at leadoff position. Steve Ontiveros at third base, Ontiveros batting second. Greg Gross in right field, Gross hitting third. Bobby Mercer in the cleanup position, and Mercer is the designated hitter today. He still has a little bit of a leg uh, muscle pull. Larry Bittner will be at first base, and Bittner batting fifth, with Tarzan Joe Wallace in center field, Wallace heading sixth. Gene Klein is in left field. Cardinal, by the way, is still uh, out with a bad knee. That's the knee that uh, you may recall Cardinal injured last September in a game against Philadelphia. Knocked him out of the last three weeks or so of the 76 campaign. So he is still recovering from that sore knee, and Klein's in left field today with George Mitterwald again doing the catching, batting eighth, and Davey Rosello at second base, Rosello batting ninth. Manny Trio had a tooth pulled a couple of days ago, says he figures he will be able to start perhaps on Monday, but he has not yet started an exhibition game. For the uh, Seattle Mariners, managed by Daryl Johnson, Louis Delgado will be leading off Delgado in center field. Tommy Smith in left field, Smith batting second. 
Juan Bernhardt at third base. Bernhardt hitting third. Lee Stanton in right field and Stanton batting cleanup with Danny Meyer at first base, Meyer batting fifth. Joe Liss, the designated hitter, L-I-S, and Liss is batting sixth. Kurt Bavacqua at shortstop, Bavacqua batting seventh. Jimmy Sexton at second base hitting eighth. And the catcher, Skip Jutsey, Jutsey batting ninth. And their starting pitcher, as we said, Frank McCormick, who last year toiled with Evansville in the minors. Phoenix Lowry coaching at third base, and Alvin Dark in the coach's box at first for the Cubs. Stepping into the batter's box, Ivan DeJesus, the right-handed hitting shortstop. So far this spring, he's hitting 286 with eight hits and a couple of runs batted in, and he is perfect record when he gets on base and steals. Wind up in the first pitch by the right-hander McCormick. And it's a little bit high. Ball one, and this game is underway. Straight away, center field, is Louis Delgado. Good complex here. It looks like it could use a little rain. But other than that, it's a pretty good ballpark. And to wind up in the pitch, a little low. Ball two, no strike. Down the line, it's 360 feet to the dark green fence. Power rally in left uh, center, but 390, maybe 395. Here's a pitch, a fastball, low and outside. And McCormick has gotten himself in the hole. Ball three, no strikes, and Ivan De Jesus. Karmic has worked six innings so far this spring, picked up a victory. Big right-hander is only allowed one hit. Walked three, struck out two. Fires a fastball in for a strike call to Larry Barnett, and the count on Ivan goes to three and all. At first base is Danny Meyer. Jimmy Sexton at second, Babakwe at short, and Bernhardt at third, the wind-up 3-1 delivery. De Jesus almost is hit by the pitch. It gets off the catcher's mitt, rolls back to the screen. Ivan, who had gone to the deck down there, gets up and trots down to first base. He has issued a base on balls to lead off the ball game. Straight away, center field, it's about 430, 35 feet. And I say about because they don't give the distance here in straightaway center, but out near the, the straightaway center, it's uh, 425 feet. And then they have a dark, high green wall that serves as a fine background for the hitters. The Jesus, as I mentioned, has done exceptionally well on the bases so far this year with five stolen bases in five attempts. Stepping in is Steve Ottaveris, batting left-handed, and he has looked better hitting lefty than he has righty. In a home run the other day, the runner goes, a swing and a foul, and he hit it sharply, and it rolls over in the line of the plate in third. So the hit and run was on. And De Jesus had a good jump. Ottaveris hitting for this spring training. Just 182. As a left-hander, he's hitting 267. All four of his hits this spring have come from the left side of the plate. And one of the four homers. Also one of them a double and one a triple. So he's shown good power from the left side. Throw to first. And a hit long fall back onto the bag in plenty of time by Ivan De Jesus. Danny Meyer, first baseman over there. No score, top of the first inning. Nobody out. Runner at first the stretch by McCormick. De Jesus, good lead does not go. A swing on a breaking ball, and he fouls it back up against the high backstop behind the plate. And so Ottaveris steps out of the batter's box, grabs a little dirt on his hands, and he finds himself in the hole with a nothing in two count. You know that old saying in the spring, a young man's fancy turns to love and baseball. More about that in a moment. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Way outside of the fastball. Well, how about taking your girl to a ball game, huh? Make it Sunday, April the 10th, because that day is Ladies' Bonnet Day at Wrigley Field. The first 15,000 gals accompanied by a fully paid adult receive a blue, wide brim foldable hat as a Cub C on front. McCormick's fastball, outside. Looks like he doesn't want out of Harris to pull this ball very much, Lou. Not with a man on first base. He's keeping the ball away from him. Jesus could lead in a throw, and he barely is back in there safely in front of the tag. Got to be sure to take in that ladies' bought day at Wrigley Field in the tent with the New York Mets in town. Get on that phone and make a date, huh? Sunday, April 10th, ladies' bought day at Wrigley Field. And that will wind up the very, very brief Cubs' uh, first home stand of the year. They open the season, you know, on Thursday the 7th against the Mets. Here's a stretch by McCormick to Jesus. Goes the pitch outside. Jetsy whirls, throws into the dirt. He's in there safely. Had to beat very, very easily. And Ivan de Jesus is six for six in stolen bases. And he got an excellent jump that time. 
And Jesse just had to whirl right around after getting the ball, which was into the dirt, to the outside of the plate. Adavaris has stepped out now. He's rubbing uh, hands with that towel. And meanwhile, having a quick word of conversation with Greg Gross, who's in the on-deck circle. Out of three and two. After being out in front of this hitter, nothing in two. McCormick now into the stretch. Long look at second base. Here's the pitch. Out of air, swings at a drive. Down the left field line. It's going to be in there for extra bases. Here comes the first run of the day. DeJesus speeding around third. And the runner going into second base. The Cubs lead one to nothing. Out of airs has just driven in his sixth run of the year. And that's his second double. This one to the opposite side. Down the line. Go walk and a stolen base. And now a double. And the Cubs grab the lead from the Seattle Mariners. Runner in scoring position. Let's see if Greg Gross can pick him up. Gross, a left-hander, playing in right field. Gross hitting 364 this spring has pounded out eight hits. One of them a home run right here at this ballpark over the right field wall. Then 390 feet away, he's driven in three runs. So McCormick again working from the stretch in the right-hander's first pitch. Strike called right down the middle. Cormac, a native of the state of New Jersey. At Evansville, last year was 4-4, and four, then up to Detroit where he's 0-5. A curveball swung out, he gets under it, hits a high foul, playable. Catcher shading his eyes, it's Skip Jutsey. Grabbing the ball in front of Bobby Mercer. The on-deck circle over in the first base side, and there's the first out of the ball game. High pop-up to the catcher. Bobby Mercer, the designated hitter. Still nursing a bit of a muscle pull. Dive his left leg. Then a bat only 12 times this spring. Has four base hits. No runs batted in. Left-hander. Has walked once. Has not yet struck out. Cubs with a one to nothing lead. And a runner at second with one gone in the top of the first inning. Here's the pitch of fastball low and inside. In the on-deck circle now is left-handed hitting first baseman Larry Bittner. And he's to be followed by Joe Wallace. Let's see how many more can come to bat in the first inning. Stretch by McCormick in the pitch. Swung on, and he fouled it sharply off the foot of the plate umpire, Larry Barnett. Ball game open with Ivan De Jesus drawing a base on balls. Then stole second base and came in on Steve Ottaveris' opposite field double. Ottaveris now at second base with one away. Gross fouled out to the catcher. And McCormick working now on Mercer. Here's the delivery. And he takes the ball outside. Ball two, strike one. Jose Cartnell. Not quite sure when his tender knee is going to permit him to get back into action. He thinks in a couple of days. Long looking second. Here's the pitch. Strike call to get fastball. And it moved. Ball two, strike two on the veteran Mercer. Billy Buckner does not appear. Will be able to play for perhaps a couple of weeks. He's still nursing that sore ankle. Out of two-two. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed a good fastball. And he just blazed it by him right in his eyes. So McCormick really bore down on that one. And he has retired the veteran Mercer. Two gone here in the first inning. Still at second base. He is out of airs. And now let's see if Larry Bittner can pick him up. Bittner so far this spring has been about 27 hits. And he has only, or 27 times, and he has only five hits. That's a 185 average. Driven in three runs. Slightly close stance for Bittner. Pitch by McCormick. Fastball. And it misses outside. Louis Delgado is shading Bittner to pull just a little bit in right center field. Bright, sunshiny day. And a little bit of a breeze blowing. Here's the delivery. Struck on the inside corner. And he took it. Ball one. Strike one. Greg McCormick. Hoping to be in that starting rotation for manager Daryl Johnson and the expansion Seattle Rainiers. Rainiers. Mariners. Here's a swing, and he pulls a foul ball down the first baseline. Mariners, it is, Vince. 
Their trainer is the former Cub trainer, Gary Nicholson. Gary, rather delighted, of course, to get the call last uh, summer to be the trainer for this ball club because Seattle is Gary's home. Bittner leveling the bat. Runner at second base. Top of the first inning, here's the delivery. Way inside, just below the belt. Ball two, strike two. Two gone. The base runner is Steve Ottaveris, who doubled down the left field line, bringing in Ivan De Jesus and McCormick working quickly into the stretch. Right hander's delivery. Takes the fastball. It misses outside of the letters. Now the count is three and two. In the on deck circle is Tarzan Joe Wallace. McCormick, the list is six four two ten. Twenty two years of age. Could have a bright future. Pitching coast West Stock, pretty high on him. 3-2 delivery. Bittner swings and a runner into the glove of the second baseman, Jimmy Sexton. And that retires the Cubs in the first inning. Well, they get on the board with a walk, and Steve Onaveris is single, the only hit of the inning. And one man left in the bases. Now, out to the mound goes young Mike Kruko. He'll be facing Delgado, Tommy Smith, and Juan Bernhardt. After a half inning, the Cubs lead Seattle one to nothing. General Finance, Bob Adams speaking. Friendly Bob Adams. Right, who's this? Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. Yeah? What's my secret? Well, I don't know. Bob, we've got ourselves a teeny tiny. What? Little feet going pitter patter. Oh, well, congratulations, boy or girl. Hey, girl, all girl, Bob. Great. Have you named her? Yeah, I think we're going to call her Spot. Spot? Don't I know it's not original name, but she's got this big black spot right between her eyes. And why not? So you got a little puppy dog right there. Right, right. Look, I want to refinish the whole basement for paneling, recess, Isn't lighting. that a little much for a puppy? Bob, for my mother-in-law, not the puppy. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant... Doesn't your mother-in-law have a room upstairs? That's where the puppy is going, Bob. I see. She's allergic to dogs. Well, you can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Now I know, Bob. But what I need right now is a loan. There are over 60 general finance offices in Chicagoland. Call friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to $10,000. Call Andover 32020. This is WGN Radio, Chicago. Louis Delgado, a switch hitter, playing in center field, is going to be stepping into the batter's box here. Native of Puerto Rico, Delgado, just 23 years of age. He's off to a very, very fast start, and obviously has made a good impression on manager Daryl Johnson. And his coaching staff, with 11 hits, he's batting 458. One of his 11, a homer. Bruco's first delivery, fastball for a strike call. To... Louis Delgado. Ada Pinson, coaching down at first base. Bruco, big young kid, delivers, comes right over the top with a good curve, swung on a miss. He's batting right-handed. And they listed him as a switch hitter. I have to say that next step on that one. Here's the windup and the delivery. Fastball strike, three called. Kruko nipping the outside corner. Caught Delgado looking. That is strikeout number five this spring for Mike. And he has now worked seven and two-thirds innings. Given up only one earned run. He's been impressive. Tommy Smith, left-handed hitting outfielder. Big kid, 6'3", 210, steps in out of the Cleveland organization. And he's having a good uh, start of it. 11 hits and 20 at-bats and 9 runs batted in. Fastball, it's off the mid of Mitterwald, high and outside to Tommy Smith, the left-hander. Mike Kruko making a bid for a starting spot with the Cubs this year. Over the top, a one-offer right back to the pitcher. Mike's got it easily. Tosses over to Bittner at first base. And they're two gone. The bases are empty. Juan Bernhardt. Slated to be the third pitcher now. D-E-R-N-H-A-R-D-T. Juan from the Dominican Republic. Syracuse last year in the minors. He hit 303 with eight homers. 57 uh, runs batted in. Got a brief uh, look with the Yankees. Came to bat only 21 times and had four hits for the Yanks. Right-hander takes, and it's a strike call. Up out of the middle, middle wall. Cubs with a one to nothing lead, bottom of the first inning. 
Pitching still looks like a major problem for the Cubs for this year. Of course, during the week since we last talked to you, the Cubs made that deal with Oakland. Getting back, relieving pitcher Jimmy Todd. There's a swing and a curveball, and he fouls it back. And they just announced a few minutes ago that Jimmy Todd has come to terms with the Cubs. General Manager Bob Kennedy, Todd says he has a two-year contract. Here's the pitch. A little high with the pass ball. Ball one, strike two. So all of the Cubbies are in the fold. Bill Coleman went over to Oakland in that deal. One, two pitch. Comes back with a curve right over the top of it that time. And it's bounced sharply over to the dugout of Seattle over in the third base side. A lot of folks don't even have to pay admission to see this game. They can park their cars up on the hill beyond the left field fence. They get a good view. Kruko delivers. Here's a swing and a drive at a right field. Greg Gross is there. He reaches up and he hauls it in. And Seattle in the first inning goes down in order. Good start. At the end of one. Cubs one and Seattle nothing. What makes Harlem's old style unique among beers and gives it that great light flavor? Well, our unique brewing process has a lot to do with it. We start with crystal clear water. Only sparkling pure spring water is good enough for old style. Water that flows cold and clear from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. And the most expensive. And it's what gives Old Style its great light flavor. Try Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. Wisconsin. Well, with the questionable pitching the Cubs had last year, and certainly it's been questionable so far this spring, a fellow like Mike Kruko, bearing as he has when we have had a chance to see him, he looks like he's got a good shot at making it, doesn't he? Well, this is the one of the two youngsters that I mentioned earlier has an opportunity to uh, be a surprise and uh, be a youngster that can pitch Major League Baseball. Kruko and, and uh, Jeff Albert. Albert is uh, a little farther away from Major League than Kruko, but I'm quite sure if Kruko does well today, he may be on that uh, starting rotation. Tires and Joe Wallace, batting lefty steps in, and the first pitch to him is a little high for ball one. Tires, five hits and 20 at bats this spring, one run batted in, makes him a 250 hitter. Larry Barnett. From the American League calling the balls and strikes. Wind up by McCormick. Tries to throw the curve, it didn't break. Hung very high. Ball three. No strikes now in Tarzan. Strange thing about Mike Kruko at Wichita in the minors last year, he was seven and nine. Had a pretty good earned run average, though, 3.3. Here's a pitch. Too high, ball four. Well, he started out the ball game by walking Ivan De Jesus, who promptly stole second base and tallied on the only hit of the ball game so far by anybody, an opposite field double by Steve Oliveras. And now Tarzan leads off the second inning by drawing a walk. Gene Kleins, who has been impressive out here in spring training this year. He's played in the outfield. He's been working out a lot at third base. He looks like he can handle that position okay. Kleins hitting 421, right-handed hitter. And he's starting the majors with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Cubs got him from Texas. Here's the pitch. Way outside with a breaking ball. And I mean it was way outside. And Skip Jutsey, caught last year for the Houston Astros, has called time. He wants to try to settle down. Frank McCormick. Cub fans out here today include Mike Mansueto from Hammond, Indiana. Larry Glick from Glenville. And Jesse Barron from Milwaukee. He says, hey, what's going on here? He's seen six games of the Cubs so far this spring, and he's picked losers all the time. Well, maybe here at Tempe against Seattle, Jesse Barron will see the Cubs come up with a victory. Throw to first and run her back safely. Jesse Barron's frustrations, a Cub fan, he says, stem back to the Hank Sauer days. Fast 
ball. And the big right hander misses low and away. So he's gotten behind on Gene Klein. The count is 2-0. and all. Venus Lowry coaching a third. Flashes the hitter aside as he steps out of the batter's box. Fairly deep in straightaway center field is Louis Delgado. Barney Sterling. They start to warm up any moment. Here's the pitch. Look, God, he almost got hit by that one. He took a little off of the pitch, but he's way off. A stock is now out of the dugout, and the veteran pitching coach is going out to see if he can settle him down. From what uh, we've heard about McCormick, Lou, he did not appear to be a, the kind of a guy who would have control problems. Well, he's firing now, and that's, uh, he, I guess, Jetski has just eliminated any breaking pitch or let up, and uh, he's having trouble, of course. I see that Glenn Abbott starting to warm up uh, for Seattle, and he wasn't due to pitch until the fifth inning. So yeah. this kid out here uh, so far in the first inning into one, one batter who walked in this inning, Wallace, and also the Kleins, he must have thrown 50-some pitches already. I wonder if there might be anything wrong with him. They're going to take him out of the ball game. Doc has been out there talking to him, and big uh, Frank something, McCormick. Something must be wrong with his yeah. shoulder. Yeah. Well, he's holding uh, his right arm right close to the side as he trots off into the dugout behind third base. And Gary Nicholson, the trainer now for Seattle, is disappearing in that runway leading to their clubhouse behind third base. And Glenn Abbott coming on to work in relief. And while we have this delay in the action, let's take time out for this message. <laughs> What makes Harlem's old style unique among beers and gives it that great light flavor? Well, our unique brewing process has a lot to do with it. We start with crystal clear water. Only sparkling pure spring water is good enough for old style. Water that flows cold and clear from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. We use this water in a traditional old world pure brewing, double brewing process called poisoning. Poisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. And it's what gives old style its great light flavor. Try old style. Pure brewed in God's country. G. Harlan and Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Glenn Abbott, of course, has the Oakland A's organization. And there are an awful lot of ball players around the majors this year who can say that, out of the Oakland organization. Glenn is a big kid, 6'6", 200, a veteran now. Like he just recently celebrated his uh, 26th birthday. Oakland last year, he was 2-4. and four. He's been in the majors a little over two years. He turned run average was no bargain with Oakland a year ago. Over five. For 62 innings, and he was hit hard. Gave up 86 or 87 hits. Spring is springing, no doubt about it. Even though I know you have some snow forecast in the Chicago area for tomorrow, you just know that spring is on its way. The Cubs will be swinging into Wrigley Field to begin their first home stand of the season. A biggie. The Cubs will go three in a row with the New York Mets Thursday, April 7th. Then on Good Friday, they they will be off. But they'll resume action with the, Cub, with the Mets at uh, Wrigley Field on Saturday and Sunday, April 9th and 10th. They'll be there for the season opener, April 7th. Hall of Fame selectee Ernie Banks is slated to throw out the first ball. And if he's fast enough, he may run to home plate and hit it also. Lanky right and Rabbit with the Cormick Embassy... The uh, principal owners of the ball club has been out here. Not only takes part a lot in the workouts, but he is down in the dugouts before the game. And uh, I don't know if you had a chance to talk to him today, Lou, before the ball game or not, but he is really spirited about this ball club. Just merely to say hello and uh, welcome him into Major League Baseball. Been a longtime baseball fan. He goes back, he says, to the days of Van Lingle Mungo. That's almost before your time. Almost. 
Any time as before my turn. <laughs> oh, you dreamer. <laughs> For ready to go, he inherited a count of 3-0. and Fires, and it's a strike call to fastball to Gene Klein. It's a good fastball by the big, lanky Glenn Abbott. If he walks us better, of course, the walk would be charged to Frank McCormick. Now the count is 3-1. and one. Runner at first base, nobody out. One to nothing comes. Runner goes. It runs, swung on, and a high fly ball. Shallow right field. Digging in, Lee Stanton. He's there. Makes the catch about 30 feet out in the grass. So Gene Clines is retired. Got underneath on the hit and run. Wallace back at first base. And here's George Minterwald. Been pretty consistent at the plate this spring. Veteran right-hander, six hits and 18 at-bats. Batted in only one run. But he's been uh, coming up with those one for three days. Steve Swisher still with a bit of a sore shoulder. Although... Manager Herman Frank says there's nothing physically wrong with Swisher. Just doesn't like the way he's been swinging the bat or catching. But uh, understanding is that Steve is still having a little bit of a problem with his shoulder. Pitch was a fastball low and a throw to first base. Tires Wallace barely got back in time. Colorful Ron Luciano. The American League umpiring at first. Stretch by Abbott. Here's the delivery. Metterwald swings, and he fouls that one into the stands over to the first base side near the Cub dugout. First time these two clubs met over here at Tempe, they drew only a little over 400 people. There are not, not a lot of Seattle fans down here in Arizona. Watch their expansion team. Abbott's pitch is high. Ball one, strike two on Metterwald, but there certainly are an awful lot of Cub fans. And a lot of them journeyed over here to Tempe today. Watch the Cubbies in action. Throw to first. Wallace back in standing this time. One away. Cubs batting in the second inning. They lead one to nothing. There's a swing. Mitterwald pulls a base hit. Through the hole on the left side. Wallace will have to stop at second base. Mitterwald coming through with his seventh hit of spring training. Cubs with runners at first and second. And Davey Rosello, as the Cubs are employing the designated hitter today, Steps in. He is hitting 313 this spring with five hits in 16 at bats. He has a chance to drive in his second or third run of the spring season. Has one RBI so far this spring. Hitting in the number nine spot. One away. Here's the delivery. Mavitt swung on. A base hit into left field. Dropping in front of the left fielder. Here's Wallace coming around third. Here's the throw from Tommy Smith. Cut off. And Mitterwald gets back into second safely. The Cubs lead two to nothing as Davey Rosello finds a single. His sixth hit of spring training and his second run batted in this spring. The Cubs have a two nothing lead. Runners at first and second, and now it's Ivan De Jesus, the top of the batting order, up. Cubs with three hits for the day. Two off of Glenn Abbott. De Jesus walked, stole second, and he is six for six in stolen bases out here this spring. He scored on Steve Onavares' opposite field double. Right-hander on the mound delivers a strike right at the knees of Yvonne. On about 5'10". Pretty solidly built, very compact. He was not exactly enthralled with Larry Barnett's call on that last pitch. He thought perhaps it was a little low and inside. The ruling holds, it's strike one count on him, but Mitterwald at second base and Davey Rosello at first. De Jesus hitting with a closed stance. Here's the pitch. The right-hander swings. A little fly ball in left field. Tommy Smith coming on. And he's there to make the belt high catch. The runners get back to their bases. Two gone. He just missed. Dumping a little Texas leaguer out there. With two gone, Steve Ontiveros. Doubled down the left field line. Steps in. Left-handed batter. Switch hitter, of course, but... He'll bat lefty against Abbott. Danny Kay just walked by. He is completely caught up in the fascination of being an owner, one of the owners of Major League Ball Club. Looks at second. Fires outside. Turned the fastball over and it missed away from out of Harris. Danny Kay is under no illusions about where this ball club is going to wind up in the standings this year, but he... He thinks that they have drafted well. They have a lot of young talent on the ball club. 
checks he's laying on a ball at his bat. He didn't want to go after that one. He says, rather than trying to go after a lot of rejects and veterans who are over the hill, he said, we're trying to get as many young players as we can in the organization, which they can build a solid base for the future. And there's nothing wrong with that philosophy. Ball one, strike one pitch. Swung on, a drive over the third baseman's head, another opposite field base hit. Here's a run scoring. Mitterwald coming around third. It's going to be another double for Ottaveras. Rosetto being waved to the plate by Phoenix Lowry. No play on him, and the Cubs lead four to nothing. Back to back, opposite field doubles by Steve Ottaveras, who has now batted in three runs for the afternoon and eight for this spring training. Not too bad. Goes with that pitch beautifully. That's hit number three. Off Abbott in relief. And two of these runs charged against him. The Cubs with a 4 nothing lead. A runner at second and stepping in is Greg Gross, a left-handed hitting outfielder. He looks at a ball going away. I'm sorry, it's a strike call. Abbott looks it out of bears. There's a curve swung on, and he drives it into center field. It's in there for a base hit. The runner goes. Here's a throw, a little late. Slides, and he is in there safely. Gross with a stolen base. Well, one thing about the Cubs this spring, while their one lost record is certainly no bargain, there is a tremendous improvement in their stolen base department. They are now 12 for 12 in stolen bases this spring. And that's four more stolen bases than they had out here last spring. Of course, that was an abbreviated spring training period because of the lockout. There's a swing by Mercer. He gets under the pitch and fouls it back. It's out of play into the crowd. So the count is ball one, strike one on Bobby. Gross in scoring position with two gone. And the Cubs out in front, five to nothing. They have five hits. We're only in the second inning. The pitch by Abbott. Curveball swung out. He drives a fly ball to left field. It should be caught. Tommy Smith is there in the sunshine, and he grabs it to retire the side. So Mercer is a DH. is 0 for 2 today. But a big second inning for the Cubs. Four runs in the inning. One walk, four base hits. One man left on at the end of one and a half innings of play at Tempe, Arizona. The Cubs lead Seattle. Five to nothing. Say, do you want a little bit more for your money? Now you can get seven little bits more for your money at True Value Hardware Stores. The Master Mechanic seven-piece drill bit set for just $2.99. Use these high-speed steel bits for drilling holes ranging from one sixteenth inch to one quarter inch. The seven drill bits have shanks that will fit any size power drill up to one half inch, so you can use them with your present drill. And they come in a sturdy plastic case for convenient storage. The Master Mechanic 7-piece drill bit set is the perfect starter set for any home workshop. And it's just $2.99 at your nearby participating True Value Hardware Store. No matter where you live, you'll find a True Value Hardware Store nearby to serve you. Seattle acquired last November in the expansion draft from California. He's going to be leading off. He had a very disappointing season last year. After having a pretty fine season in 75. 75, he had his best year in the majors, setting career highs and leading the Angels with 14 homers and 82 runs batted in, snapping the right hander. Checks his swing. Krukos, pitch hits his bat and goes foul. Jim Busby, familiar name to Chicago, played at the White Sox back in the 50s, coaching at third base. And Veda Pinson, another fine former Major League outfielder, coaching at first. Kirko's delivery. Fastball. The right-hander misses outside. Ball one. Strike one on Lee Stanton. Went to California. The Mets in uh, 72. Played five years with the Angels. Swings and he gets under it. It's a high foul. It is back out of play. Right over our heads. Five-nothing Cubbies. With Seattle batting in the second inning, Stanton is to be followed by the first baseman, Danny Meyer, and then Joe Liss. Who hopes to make it in the majors this year. He has been a tremendous power hitter in the minor leagues. Liss has. Kirko winds. Right enters pitch. Curve. And he just missed the inside corner. Ball two. Strike one. On right-handed hitting Lee Stanton. 
He is seven for 21 this spring. Stanton is. Two two delivery. Jams him with it. He swings, fouls it back out of play. Truco with a good live arm. Bases are empty. Angels batting in the second. Mike Rico's next pitch. Fastball. Das missed the outside corner to run the count to three and two. Mitterwald thought they had the batter looking at strike three. Larry Barnett. American League played umpire said, uh-uh. Cubs with five runs and five hits. Angels went down in order against Kruko in the first inning. Here's Mike's next delivery. Swung on and a drive over the second baseman's head. It's going to split the gap between right and center field and rolling all the way out there near the fence. Picked up, dropped by the center fielder, dropped again. And that'll permit the runner to go to third base. As Tars and Joe Wallace could not find a handle on the ball. Picked it up once, dropped it. Picked it up again, dropped it. I'd give him a double. And an error, but let's see what they're going to call it. Right between Wallace and Gross. No error has been posted yet. They have a runner at third base. With nobody out, left-handed hitting, and Danny Meyer steps in. It's 252 with Detroit a year ago. He swings, pulls the pitch foul. Goes over in front of the cup dugout behind the first base. This spring, Meyer... Hitting the 267 with three runs batted in. Four hits for him. <laughs> Runner with third. Five nothing. Cubs lead. Angels batting in the second inning. Wind up by Mike Kruko. Here's the pitch. Fastball low and inside. Struck to go after it held up in time. With Detroit last year, Meyer got into. 105 ball games. 252 was his batting average. Had only two homers, 16 runs batted in. Here's the pitch, and the left hander swings a drive in the left field. Going back forward, it's seen Clyde that is well hit over his head. Bounces over that high dark green wall for a ground rule double. And the Angels are on the board. It's 5 to 1 Cubs. Opposite field, ground rule double. Off the bat of Danny Meyer. So Kruko, after putting the side down in order in the first inning, in this inning has been greeted by two extra base hits and given up a run. Finds fooled by that ball. He didn't think it was going to carry that far out in left field. And here's Joe Liss, who with Toledo in the minors last year hit 30 home runs. Slightly close stance for Liss. He's three for eight this spring for Seattle. The right-hander checks his swing, and Kruko misses down low. Ball one. Russ has had a couple of shots. The uh, majors never quite uh, reached the potential. A lot of people think he has. Goes after a fastball that's down and in on him, and he fouls it out of play. He is 30 years old. Drafted from the Cleveland organization. Married his three uh, children. Kruko looking at the runner at second. Nobody out. Here's the pitch. Joe Liss swings, and there's a drive. Klein's coming on in left field. He reaches down, gets that ball just before it hits the grass. Wheels a throw into second base, not quite in time to nail the runner. Danny Myers getting back there. Sinking liner to Joe Cl- or to uh, Gene Klein's in left field for the first out of the second inning. And that brings up Kurt. Babakwa. He was with the Pittsburgh Pirates a few years ago. Babakwa, three for six this spring. And he remembers playing in Wrigley Field for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Coming up with one hit in three at bats that day. Right enter. Swings mightily, almost went to his knees, and he chopped the foul back out of play. Five to one. Score and the Cubs out in front of Seattle. We're in the bottom of the second inning at Tempe, Arizona. Rockwood broke into professional ball for the Miners in 1967, ten years ago. Rucco in the stretch with a runner at second base. And he gets him back there as he fakes making a throw to second with the shortstop to Jesus taking a couple of steps toward the bag. 
Vakwa played a little bit with Milwaukee last year, but very little. He spent most of that season at Spokane, where he hit 337. Pitch, the right-hander swings, chops a foul ball, bounced up and hit him before rolling over to the first base side of the plate, and the count on Bavakwa goes to 0-2. This is the guy you may recall who won the uh, National League bubble uh, gum blowing contest a couple of years ago. Great performance. Here's the pitch. Fastball. It's too high. Ball one, strike two, one gone. A runner at second base. Seattle batting in the bottom of the second inning against young Mike Kruko. Looks the runner back to second, comes to the plate, a fastball swung on the ground ball to De Jesus. Case is a nice hop. Straightens up at the back, ducked out of the dirt by Larry Bittner. De Jesus throwing that ball about three feet in front of the dirt over to Bittner. He's got a strong enough arm. That was not one of his better throws, but Bittner scooped it up cleanly. The runner holding at second base are two gone. Jimmy Sexton, who spent last year in the minors, hopes to make it to the majors this year, steps in. The right-hander takes a ball in too close. And Mike Kruko wants another baseball. A spring, Sexton, two for 11 for Seattle. You know, whether it's your mom, your wife, your sweetheart, or the gal next door, get your best gal and take her out to the ball game at Wrigley Field on Sunday, April 10th, Ladies' Body Day. The first 15,000 ladies to come to Wrigley Field, accompanied by a fully paid adult male, receive a... Blue, wide brim, foldable hat. Has the cup C on front. There's a pitch. Breaking ball. Missed inside. And he finds himself behind. 2-0. Oh. That's Ladies' Bonnet Day Sunday at Wrigley Field. March the, or April the 10th. And the Cubs will be taking on the New York Mets. Curve. He misses inside. Ball three. First home stand of the season. Thursday, April 7th, will be the lid lifter at Wrigley Field against the Mets. Pitching matchups. May find Ray Burris going against Tom Seaver, who seems to be disenchanted with the Mets front office again. Trio delivery, fastball. He pumped that one right in. The batter was taking all the way. 5 1 the score here at Tempe, Arizona this afternoon. The Cubs with the lead. Two gone, a runner at second base. Skip Jetsy, the catcher. In the on deck circle, fastball, strike call. Boy, that Kruko loop shows some blazing speed when he has to, doesn't he? Oh yes, he, he's got he's got it. He can rear back and fire. He's been working on a let up and a curveball here in this inning, uh, staying away from that fastball because the first two hitters stayed back and was waiting for the fastball. They got it. The results were base hits. Three two pitch, threw it right by him, swung on a miss for strike three. Well, he opened the ball game the first inning with a strikeout, and he ends the second inning with a strikeout. So after the first two batters got on with extra base hits. They manage only one run, and one man is left on, and at the end of two. Cubs come to bat. Leading off will be Larry Bittner, and the Cubs lead Seattle 5-1. to one. General Finance, Bob Adams speaking. Bob, you got to talk him out of it. Talk who out of what? He's on his way now. Who is this? Iris Bluestein. Iris? Wife of that well-known athlete and adventurer, Bernie Bluestein. Oh, Bernie Bluestein. You don't remember, do you? No, I don't. Bob, whose mountain climbing expedition to Mount LaRue during the rock slide season did you finance two years ago? It's coming back to me. And whose balloon ascension over Lake Tonawanda in an electrical storm did you make possible last September? Got you. Last week, he discovered that the 1947 record for water skiing the entire length of the Mississippi has never been broken. You don't think the way from St. Louis to Cairo on his left leg. He broke the record. No, oh, his left leg. Bob, whatever he's got in mind next, you got to talk him out of it. Well, I'll do what I can, Mrs. Thank Dump. you, Bob. Thank you. Well, you can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. I mean, our medical bills have been astronomical. You can also get a loan. There are 60 General Finance offices in Chicagoland. Call friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to $10,000. Call and over 32020. Larry Bittner is to lead off against Glenn Abbott as this ball game now goes into the third inning. Bittner lined out to the second baseman to retire the Cubs in the first inning. Not off to a very fast start this spring. Five for 28. Well below the 200 mark. He'll be followed by Tarzan Joe Wallace and then Gene Klein's. We hope a few more. Abbott, the big veteran right hander, came on when in the second inning. Starting pitcher Frank McCormick came up with an injury that has not yet been announced, probably to his shoulder. 
Wide up first pitch of ball. Fastball swung on it. There's a drive. It's out in the left field. Larry Bittner is on with an opposite field liner over the shortstop's head. So he's one for two today. That for the Cubs is their fifth hit off of Abbott, who had given up five hits in five innings in previous work for Seattle this spring. Wallace walked leading off the second inning. Still second base. Came in on Rosello's base hit, and he takes the curve too low. Vince Lloyd, Lou Boudreau reporting here at Tempe with bright sunshine. As usual out here in the Valley of the Sun. Have it in the stretch. Runner doesn't go, and a ball outside. 2-0. and Rick Russell is slated to start tomorrow, and our broadcast will be on, starting with uh, Lou and the leadoff man at 1.40 tomorrow afternoon. Chicago time, a ball too low. Lap Galasso, a young man who's jealous has a pretty good curveball, is scheduled to start that one for Seattle. Look at first base. Bittner short lead to pitch. Pass ball taken. First strike. Ball three, strike one. Wallace taking three and oh. Now let's see if they give him the green light on three and one. But there's still a fairly short lead. There he goes. And pitch is high and outside. The run and hit that time. Ball four puts runners at first and second. With the first walk issued by Abbott. And only his second this spring. With nobody out, Cub runners at first and second. Cubby's leading five to one. Gene Kleins, who was in the batter's box when McCormick had to leave the ball game. And Abbott came on. Inherited a three and nothing count, but he got Kleins. They hit run a little fly ball to right field. Gene takes it. High ball one. Runner at second is Bittner. The runner at first base is Joe Wallace. Glenn Abbott. Glenn Abbott out of the Oakland organization on the hill. The look at second to pitch. Fastball misses inside to Kleins, a right-hander. Peanut Lowry, coaching a third, was doing some special tutoring the other day over at the Cubs training camp at Scottsdale on base runners with their leads, particularly at second base. Abbott has his side. Here's the pitch to Klein. Swung on. Ground ball back up the middle. And it's in there for a base hit. Here comes Bittner flying around third. He will score easily, but Wallace will have to stop at second base. Gene Klein's hit one just in the third base side of the mound, out of the reach of the shortstop of Buckley and the second baseman, Jimmy Sexton. Still nobody out. The Cubs have a 6-1 to one lead. Runners at first and second, and George Bitterwald will be the batter. He singled in the second inning and scored. The Cubs having a little fun this afternoon. That's hit number six off of Abbott. And for the Cubs, their seventh hit of the afternoon. Third inning. Pitch to Mitterwald, and he takes a strike over the outside corner. A good fastball. Cars in a pretty good lead at second base. Klein's good speed at first. Here's the pitch. Curve that's way into the dirt, and Skip Judge does a nice job blocking the ball, preventing it from going by him. Stars and stripes in the flagpole behind the 425-foot mark, hanging pretty limp right now. The breeze has died down completely. Here's the pitch. Swung out. Pulls the ground ball base hit. Through the left side. Here's Wallace. Lowry waving him to the plate. Here's the throw to the plate. It is cut off, and the Cubs pick up another run. As Spinnerwald drives in his second run this spring with his second straight hit of the afternoon. Three hits in this inning with a walk in between. And when Abbott came out in the second inning, they got four base hits off of him, three singles and a double by Anavaris. And now Davey Rosello, who's singled and drove in a run in the second inning, steps into the batter's box. There is still nobody out. Seven to one, Cubbies. Sounds good. Curveball. He misses inside. Very little break to it. 
Bitterwald is two for two today. And Adabaris is two for two with two doubles and three runs batted in for Adabaris. Seven to one score cuts. Finds a runner at second. That checks him. Throws another curve and misses high. Missed with two breaking pitches to Davy. Was hitting well this spring. Way over the 300 mark. Two runs here in the third. Four in the second. One in the first inning. Abbott looks again at second. Fastball swung on. He pulls a ground ball. Bats the third baseman off his glove. Shortstop picks it up on the seat of his pants and he has no play anywhere. That'll be an infield single to load the bases. Juan Bernhardt moved quickly to his left, but the, all he could do is deflect the ball. And Babak with the shortstop got it, but he was sitting down when he finally fielded the ball. Four hits in the inning. Nobody out. Base is loaded. And here is Ivan de Jesus, who has walked and flied out to left field. Let's see if he can get his first hit of the day. Nine hits so far for the Cubs today. Curveball right over the top, and it's way off the mark. Nowhere near the strike zone, low and outside. Abbott tried a couple of curveballs, first two pitches to Rosello. Couldn't find the strike zone. Throws a curve here, and he's way low and outside with it. Bases are jammed. Let's see if he's going to challenge this hitter. Devon De Jesus. Fastball, it's high and tight. Back to away from the plate with that one. And he now finds himself in a hole, 2-0, and oh, with the bases jammed and nobody out. Up inning for Mr. Abbott. So was the second inning when he came on earlier than scheduled. Fastball swung on. De Jesus hits a little foul ball off his body, winds up in front of the plate. Ball two, strike one on Yvonne. Cup fans, I think, are going to like Mr. De Jesus. Has good speed, a good glove. And here this spring, he's hit pretty well. Here's the pitch to him. Foul as Abbott came down and in on him. Looks like the pitch might have been out of the strike zone. But the count goes to two and two. He took a rip at it. Klein's the base runner at third. Mitterwald at second base and Davey Rosello the base runner at first. They're playing fairly much straight away. Abbott from the stretch. Fastball swung on. Bouncing ball past the third baseman. Base hit into left field. Here's Klein's coming around to score. Here's Mitterwald coming in. And the Cubs increase the lead. It is now 9-1. to one. As De Jesus comes through with two runs batted in, giving him four for the spring. And this one is really turning into a rough. Stopping at second base was Davey Rosello. That's the fifth hit in this inning off Abbott. West Stop, the pitching coach, going out to talk to him. He's got nobody uh, throwing in that bullpen. He's just having uh, trouble with all kinds of pitches, isn't he? Yes, he's hitting the bat quite frequently. <laughs> you can say that he's had a tough inning, but the guy that actually has had a tougher goal of it than pitchers right here is that for catcher, Jutsky. He's been jumping around behind that plate for the first three innings here. He's caught a cold with the wind of the runners coming in, uh, passing him up, touching on plate. Well, it's only 9-1 right now. Hello, Blake. Blake Cullen, former traveling secretary of the Cubs and now director of public relations for the National League, stopping by. We're ready to go to pitch to Adamaris. He swings and he smashes the base hit into right field. Here comes Rosella around third. He's being waved to the plate. It is now 10-1 Cubs, and Adamaris has batted in his fourth run of the ball game. He had two opposite field doubles. They hold him to a single this time, and he pulled it sharply past the first baseman out to the right fielder, Lee Stanton. So Ron Averis, who started the day hitting 182, now is three for three with seven hits in his first 25 at-bats this spring. You just have to envy Blake. He's going to be a native New Yorker in just a couple he of months, and he's really going to, to stay there <laughs> looking forward to all those nice... Broadway play. Yeah. You're that type, good kid. You're, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> no, that's true. Your heart's still and in Delaney, Chicago. Beautiful uh, San Francisco. Uh, my car. <laughs> Your car is where? A lot of dents, too, probably. Good place. Keep it right by Wrigley Field. We may have to borrow it from time to time, Blake. 
Runners at first and third, and Greg Gross in there takes the ball. He is singled and fouled out today. Battled in a run. Still on the base. And he takes it too low. Yeah, there's still nobody out in this inning. Runners at first and third. Six hits and a walk so far off Abbott in this inning. There's a strike for the outside corner. You want to read about Greg Gross, Bobby Mercer, Gene Klein, Steve Onaveras, Ivan DeJesus, all newcomers to the Cubs. Here's a swing and he taps one to the shortstop. He's got it, tosses to second for one. The relay, long stretch by Meyer for the out. Double play. What a run scores on it to make it 11 to 1 Cubs. Joe, for a change, Abbott is going to work from a windup. Let's see how he handles that. Bobby Mercer, the ninth Cub, to step in in this inning. He's in the batter's box with nobody on base. He has to jump back out of the way of a pitch low and inside. Ball one on him. Six runs in this inning. Six hits so far. And a walk. There's a ball. Fast ball missing inside. Want to read about Bobby Mercer and all the rest of the new Cubs. About 50 pages of biographies, statistics, and all the players. Here's this way. And he bounces one to the second baseman. Jimmy Sexton has it. And Bobby Mercer in the Cubs. Finally have it in the third. They bat around. The new Cub spring roster book is yours for just a dollar plus 25 cents for mailing and handling. Roster book, Wrigley Field, Chicago. 60613. Six runs, six hits, and nobody left in the bases. It is now the Cubs 11, Seattle 1. You know, Lou, I think Al Gaines travels almost as much as we do with those car buying trips that he takes to Detroit every other week. Well, you know, Al logs a lot of air miles, that's right. But we should tell the fans we're talking about Al Gaines, president of the Fireside Chrysler Plymouth. Yeah, and I guess we should also tell them that when it comes to one-of-a-kind, executive-driven cars, there's no doubt about it, Al Gaines keeps Fireside ahead. Vince is right, fans. Al flies to Detroit every other week to purchase luxurious autos pre-driven by Chrysler Corporation executives. These cars have really been babied. In some cases, they're barely broken in. Yeah, and in most cases, they're loaded with expensive options, and it costs you thousands of dollars to order a new car with all the elegant, convenience equipment that these cars have. But because these autos have been driven, and because Al buys volume, saves bundles, you do too. Save on Chrysler Imperial, down in country wagons, New Yorkers, Newports, Cordovas. Or pick a Dodge Monaco or a Plymouth Duster, Satellite Fury. Fireside has them all, and there's always between 25 and 50 in stock at Chrysler Plymouth Fireside on Golf Road, just west of the Whitfield Shopping Center out in Schaumburg. If you want something really special in an executive car, there's no doubt about it. Fireside Chrysler Plymouth's the place to shop. Skip Jetsy, ninth man of the batting order, steps in in the first pitch, a fastball high to the right-hander. Takes that one, hit, misses inside at the letters. Veteran Jetsy, the Houston organization last year. Count on him, 2-0. Hitting only 188 this spring for Daryl Johnson's Seattle Ball Club. There's a fastball. Kruko misses low with that one. 3-0 now. Mike gave up extra base hits to Stanton and Meyer leading off the second inning. And it's allowed one run, two hits. Struck out two men. No walks up until that pitch, which missed inside for ball four. It's only the third walk that Mike has issued out here this spring. And he's now worked nine of the third innings. So control has not been his problem. At least up to now. Louis Delgado is struck out. Leading off the first inning, steps in from Puerto Rico. Started the day hitting 458 for Seattle this spring. Strike called and a good curve. Had him backing away from the plate and it broke over the inside corner. Strike one count. Runner at first. Let's see if the Cubs can come up with a double play. Fastball this time swung on. He lifts the fly ball to the right fielder, Greg Gross, who parks under it. Playing him almost perfectly. Moved about one step. Opposite field fly ball. Retires Delgado and brings up the left-handed hitting, young Tommy Smith. Cincinnati and San Diego have the honor of opening the National League season this year. At Cincinnati, of course. That's where they open traditionally. 
That'll be a couple of days before the Cubs take on the Mets in Chicago. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside. Jeremy Smith leaned back away, lost his balance, and staggered out of the batter's box. 11 to 1 score, Cubs leading. We're not going to be too relaxed with that lead. <laughs> Great chuckle. You weren't at Wrigley Field last year when we had him at for Philadelphia, I think, 16 to nothing. Mr. Good, the young pitcher, he's a Truco? Yeah, yeah. Really? I think he's going to make it. Sure hope so. Your heart's still with the Cubbies, huh? All the way. I don't believe it. Like into the stretch. Strike. Had him taking that one. Ball one, strike one. Kind of anxious, Lou, to get a look at Rick Reschel tomorrow. Hope he's going to be in the groove. Yes, this is the second time around for most of these pitchers, and they should be improving in so far as strength in the arm. That's a swing. Foul ball. Chopped right at the plate. Can't say that about Burris his second time around or third second time around. Third time. I don't know what happened out both to him because the first time out, he looked perfect. Of course, it might be a good sign also, which means that he can't sit back on his laurels. He'll have to work a little bit now. That first outing perhaps uh, gave him too much of an idea that he's ready. One-two delivery with one out of man on. It takes the fastball a little bit low. Burris has been getting his stuff up high. And it has been sailing out of the ballpark with great frequency. His last two starts. One gone, a runner at first. Skip Judgely does not have good speed, doesn't go. 3-2 pitch swung on. He loops a little fly ball. Out to the left fielder, Gene Kleins. Moves to his left. Wind carries it a little bit, and he hauls it in easily. They're two gone. Judgely still at first base. That'll bring up one Bernhardt. Right-hander. I did not see Bonham work the other day in the B squad game where they just split the squad. Curveball by Mike is in for a strike call, but they say that Bonham was throwing pretty well. Strike one count on the right handed hitting Juan Bernhardt. Runner at first is Jutsey. They're not holding him on. Fastball. Did not hold up in time. The pitch was looked like it was out of the strike zone, down and away to him. And he started to go after it, wanted to hold up, but he'd committed himself. And so Mike is out in front of this hitter, nothing and two. With two gone, Cubs romping 11 to 1, the pitch. Fastball swung on, ground ball to DeJesus. The shortstop has it. Quick throw to Rosetto. He feels it for the force out to retire Seattle in the third. No runs, no hits, and they leave one man on. So at the end of three, Cubbies lead 11 to 1. Well, you probably don't go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. You probably pick up some while you're there, though, just because you happen to see them at the checkout counter. Well, here's a good reason to go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. Now you can get a four-pack of Ever Ready C or D-sized batteries for just 77 cents. You might not need batteries right now. But remember those times when you needed a flashlight and the batteries were dead? Or the time you were going to the beach with your portable radio? Guess what? No batteries. Well, those are not the times to go to the store for batteries, but now is the time. A four-pack of Everready C or D-sized batteries are just 77 cents in the Hardware Week circular from participating True Value Hardware stores. We finished three, and so far, good news. Cubs with a 10-run lead. It's more than just a game. It's a way of doing business that means true value. We have finished three, and so far, it looks great. Cubs with 11 runs on 11 hits, and Seattle with one run on two hits. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau. Lou, come on in. Let's keep it going, huh? Thank you, Vince. Cubs batted around in the third inning to score six runs after scoring four in the second and one in the first. Abbott has been no puzzle whatsoever to the Cubs. He's allowed the Cubs uh, nine hits, nine runs. Now here's Bittner at bat. He started the six-run inning. He swings and pops one foul down the left field line. The hitting star thus far, Ontiveros, who has two doubles and a single four RBIs, and he knows that he can hit. It's just the 
problem of whether he can field the position of third base. Here's a swing and a line drive fair ball. Down the left field line, another extra base hit. Bittner rounds first, will go into second, round second, but holds up as Smith gets that ball in quickly and holds Bittner to a double. Now Bittner has two for three, and that's the third double of the game thus far for Cubs. On Tavares with two, Bittner here with one. So he's on second, nobody out. Here's Wallace, who has walked twice. Cubs having a little fun, swinging the bats, making contact. Now, with 11 hits to their credit. First pitch by Abbott, curveball, strike call. Abbott has allowed 10 hits and 8 runs in his stint when he relieved McCormick in the second inning. Wallace takes that pitch inside as he jumps away from that curveball. One and one, the count. Abbott, tall right-hander, formerly with Oakland, checks Bittner at second. The pitch to Wallace on its way. Checks his swing as the ball is high. Ball two, strike one. The stretch, the pitch. Outside, the ball three. Three and one now. Well, the Cubs having some fun today with hits and runs. We understand the White Sox scored 12 runs in one inning today. Here's a swing and a foul. Full count now on Wallace, three and two. The Asus has one for three. Ah, uh, on Tavares, three for three. Gross, one for three. Mercer, the designated hitter, hasn't had a hit thus far. Bittner has two for three. Wallace, 0 for uh, 0 because he has walked twice. He swings. It's a ground ball base hit into right field. So he adds his name to the hitting contest here. Here's a throw. And uh, Bittner scores. The throw is off of the glove of Jutsey, the catcher. And there's Wallace going to third. He goes to second on the throw. And I would say an error on the catcher, which allows Wallace to go to third. Wallace singles to right, driving in his first run of the day. The score is now 12 to 1 Cubs. Charged Jutsey, the catcher, with an error. So everyone in the Cubs lineup except the designated hitter, Mercer, with at least one hit. Now here's Klein's at bat. He has one for two. WGN Chicago. In. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one on Klein. Lavacqua at short. Sexton at second. They're in one step from the infield grass, which is natural turf here. Here's the pitch. Curveball outside. Jutsey moves out quickly, gloves it. It's now one and one. Bernhardt at third, even with the bag. And the first baseman, Meyer, even with the bag at first. One and one pitch by Abbott. Curveball outside once again. Ball two, strike one. Jetsy has caught a doubleheader already, and we're just in the fourth inning. Abbott feels like he's pitched a doubleheader. Here's a swing of ground ball, and a third baseman grabs that ball backhanded, tags the runner sliding back into third. He's safe at third, a long throw to first, and Kleins beats it out for a base hit. But let me tell you, Bernhardt made a great play, moving over the bag in fair territory, backhanging the ball, and fortunately for Wallace, he retreated and slid into the third base ahead of the tag by Bernhardt. By the time Bernhardt straightened up and threw the first, Kleins beat it out for a base hit. So that's Kleins' second hit of the day. The 12th hit for the Cubs. And now here's Mitterwell at bat runners on first and third. Curveball strike called. One run in. Wallace at third. Kleins at first. Nobody out. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball two. Correction on that count. It's one and one. The first pitch was a called strike to Mitterwald. The pitch, swing and a miss on a good inside fastball, strike two. No action in the Seattle bullpen. <laughs> 
Mariners infielders now at double play depth. Curveball swinging a high, long foul ball down the left field line. So Mitterwald gets another opportunity, and he's seen a lot of action this spring behind the plate. Fighting to, for a job, hoping to beat out Swisher. He has two hits and two appearances at the plate today, one RBI. The pitch by Abbott. Swing and a line drive base hit the left field. Wallace will score as Smith takes that ball on the first bounce, throws in the second base to hold, climbs to second. Cubs continue to get base hits. That's their 13th hit of the day. Or 15th, I should say. And McCormick allowed one hit before he left with a sore arm in the second inning. It's now 13 to 1, Cubs. And here's Rosello, who has two for two. I wonder how Mercer feels. Sitting on the bench as a designated hitter, and he's 0 for 3. There's a swing and a pop foul out of play. Rosello. Levels that bat over the uh, play. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call. Abbott into the stretch. Nobody out. Runners on first and second. Curveball high. Ball one. Here's a, a stretch by Abbott. Curveball, and he swings and fouls that ball and throwing the bat clear down to the third base coach. He's still alive, though. 0 oh, and 2. Abbott looks in, gets a sign from Jutsey. The stretch, here's the pitch to Rosello. Inside, ball one. Cubs having a little fun here. The score is now 13 to 1 in favor of the Cubs. And we're in the fourth inning. Here's a ball high and inside. Full count now. Three and two on David Rosello, who is hitting in the ninth spot. Cubs and the Seattle using the designated hitter. The pitch. Strike three called over the inside corner. Rosello thought the ball was inside. And that's the first strikeout for Abbott. Now here's the top of the order, De Jesus. Ivan De Jesus. Walked in the first inning, scored the first run on Antaveras' double to left, then flight out to left, and then singled in the third inning. Abbott, still on that mound, he came in when McCormick hurt his arm in the second inning, pitching to Klein. The stretch and the pitch, curveball, swing and a line drive foul down the left field line. Cubs with 13 runs, 15 hits. Everyone in the Cub lineup except Mercer. Well, they're taking the hit away from Pines, giving him a fielder's choice, so we only have 14 hits. Uh, in the, in the in this, uh, inning here. In this inning? Yeah. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball one. That's a very tough one to take it away from them because had there been no runner on third, I doubt it whether Bernhardt would have been able to throw him out. He made a great play even to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Swing a foul out of the glove of the catcher, Jutsey. Cubs with one run in the first, four in the second, six in the third, already two in the fourth. And runners on first and third 
with one out. De Jesus at bat, levels the bat over the plate. Big tall right hander Abbott gets his sign for Jutsy. The stretch. Here's the pitch. Strike called over the outside corner. So now, after Bittner doubled, Wallace singled, Kleins was safe on that fielder's choice, Minterwall singled, Abbott has struck out Rosello and De Jesus. Now here's Antaveras. Two doubles to the opposite field, and then singled sharply to right. Adding left handed against Abbott. The pitch let up high. Well, he's hit two fastballs on the outside of the plate to left field. Hit a curveball into right field, so Jetsy decided to throw Moletta, but it was high. Ball one. The pitch, there's a strike, a fastball over the outside corner. Two outs now, here in the top of the fourth inning. Kleins is on second base, middle wall is on first. The one and one pitch on its way. Curveball, tap foul against the screen in front of the Cubs dugout. Montague, John Montague warming up now in the Seattle bullpen. Montague with Oklahoma City, 114 and lost six. So he'll probably see action in the next inning. Montaveras levels the bat over the plate. The pitch. Takes the pitch into the dirt. Blocked by Jutsey, and it's now ball one, strike two. Ontiveros with four RBIs, hitting in the second spot. Steps back into the batter's box. Levels the bat over the plate. Habit into the stretch, looks back at Kleins at second. The pitch is low inside. Three and one. Two outs in the inning. The runner's off. Here's the pitch. Low. Ball four. The bases are loaded for Gross. That's the second walk issued by Abbott. Now Gross, who has one for three with one RBI, steps in the batter's box. In today's lineup, Herman Franks has sent five left-handed hitters in the in a row here against Abbott. There's a first pitch a strike. To Jesus on the Barris is a switch hitter. And then Gross, Mercer, Bittner, and Wallace. Faces loaded, two outs. The pitch by Abbott. Low. One and one to count. Cubs lead 13 to 1. We're in the fourth inning. Gross swings on that curveball, hits it to left field. It's a base hit in front of Smith, and one run will score. Here comes Mitterall to score the second run on Gross's single to left field. So now he has three RBIs now, and the score now becomes 15 to 1. That is the Cubs' 15th hit. And it's 15 to 1 in favor of the Cubs. And now here's Mercer. And once again, here in the fourth, as the Cubs did in the third, they have batted around. Mercer is the ninth man to bat in the inning. First pitch is a strike call. On Tavares at second, Gross at first. The pitch to Mercer. He swings and lines a base hit into right field. On Tavares rounds third. He will score. Gross will go to third. So Mercer joins the hit parade with his first hit of the day and his first RBI in a Cub uniform. And it's now 16 to 1. And here's Bittner who started the inning and out of the dugout comes West Stock. So it looks like we might have a change here. As he reaches the mound, he points to the bullpen, and John Montague will come in and relieve. So while we have this delay, let's pause for this action and message. <laughs>
What makes Harlem's old style unique among beers and gives it that great light flavor? Well, our unique brewing process has a lot to do with it. We start with crystal clear water. Only sparkling pure spring water is good enough for old style. Water that flows cold and clear from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. We use this water in a traditional old world pure brewing, double brewing process called poisoning. Poisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. And it's what gives old style its great light flavor. Try old style. Pure brewed in God's country. This is Montague's third game. Well, there's been a lot of base hits around here, this ballpark. <laughs> it's upset a lot, a lot of ball players and an engineer, and two announcers. Montague has pitched six innings. He's only allowed three hits. He's had quite a. He's a right hander, and as we mentioned earlier, he, last year he was with Oklahoma City, where he won 14 and lost six. He struck out 120 men while only walking 51. So he will face Bittner here, who led off the inning about a half hour ago with a double. So now let's see what Bittner will do against Montague. The first pitch, fastball first strike. Cubs have Gross on third and Mercer on first. Five runs have scored here in the fourth inning. The Cubs now lead 16 to 1. Bittner has two for three thus far. And is the only hitter without an RBI. Here's a swing and a pop foul. Out of play. Two strikes to Bittner. As Montague looks in, gets a sign. The pitch on its way. Swing and a line drive, and it's foul down the right field line. Bittner really got out in front of that one and fouled it down the right field line. Mariners, managed by Daryl Johnson, who earlier on the leadoff man show just didn't know what his ball club would do. They've had a great... Uh, spring thus far, winning five and losing four. Here's a swing and a foul of the screen. Count remains two strikes. They've scored quite a few runs, but the main thing, and he says is a plus, is his speed. He has a lot of speed on this ball club. He's doubtful and, uh, of what his pitching can do in the major leagues. Inside, one and two on Bittner. Comes with runners on first and third. Five runs in. The pitch inside. Two and two the count now to Bittner. Bittner started this inning. The Cubs have batted around. He's the tenth man to hit. Bittner playing, of course, at first base in place of the injured Buckner. The pitch. Swing it around ball the second baseman, and Sexton has it. Straightens up, throws the first. Three outs. But in the fourth inning, the Cubs come up with... Five runs, five hits, two men, one error in the inning, and two men left on the bases. So now with the Seattle Mariners coming to bat in the fourth inning, it's Cubs 16, Seattle 1. I'm Trooper Al Hapek of the Illinois State Police. One of the most frequent violations on the highway that causes collisions is following too close. That is the driver who fails to consider the speed of the traffic and the conditions of the highway and not allowing enough space to stop safely, if necessary, without colliding with the vehicle in front. A basic rule to follow is allow one vehicle length for every 10 miles per hour between you and your fellow traveler. The most used excuse is, if I do, people keep getting in front of me, putting me further and further behind. That's probably right, but if the other guy shows no courtesy, it does not mean you should lose your cool. Drop back, remain alert, judge the condition of the pavement you're driving on. Remember, if the highway is wet, you will need a greater distance between you and the guy in front 
before you can stop safely without a collision. Wet brakes and tailwind velocity during fast speed driving can make the difference in your stopping on time. Safe driving could save a life. Yours. Kruko on the mound here at Tempe Stadium. Cubs against the expansion club, the Seattle Mariners. Kruko should be relaxed somewhat. But as the youngster trying to make this Cub Major League roster as one of the starting pitchers, he'll be bearing down, working hard. He's allowed one run, two hits. And here's Stanton, who tripled off Kruko in the second inning. First pitch inside, fastball, ball one. Lee Stanton tripled in the second inning, scored as Dan Meyer, who's in the on-deck circle, doubled. Those were the only hits thus far off Kruko. There's a let-up for a strike. Very fine pitch. Cubs with one in the first, four in the second, six in the third, five in the fourth. What will it be in the fifth? Kruko ready. Into the windup of the pitch. Fastball tap foul. Right at the plate. One ball, two strikes. Kruko has walked one man. He has struck out two. Cubs play at least at straight away. The pitch from Kruko. Curveball for a strike, a beauty. That's the pitch that Kruko has been working on and did not have last year. There was no doubt that he had a major league fastball. But he had to have another pitch to go with that fastball. And he's developed a curveball with fine control, as proven on that pitch, as it fooled Stanton. That's the third strikeout for Kruko. And now with one out, here's Dan Meyer. Left-handed hitter, a let up. High, ball one. Meyer doubled in the second inning. There's a fastball inside, and it's ball two. Cubs will take on this expansion club tomorrow in Scottsdale. Swing a line drive into left center. Wallace moves quickly over, gloves it on the one hop, gets it in as Meyer lined that ball to left center for a single. That's the third hit of Kruko, but played very nicely by Wallace to only hold it to a single. Now here is Joe Liss. And this is the fellow that Johnson and the Mariners are depending upon for some power from the left side of the plate. As we look at it, he's a right-handed hitter. The pitch outside the ball one. Meyer on first, one out. Bittner playing behind the runner with a huge lead that the Cubs enjoy right now. 16 to 1. The pitch. There's a let up low. As Mitterwall is just using this game right now as a so called practice session for Kruko as he's using all types of pitches. The pitch, a swing and a foul down the left field line past Busby, third base coach, and now the count is 2 and 1. Liss, designated hitter in the Line up as Kruko is ready. He sets, pitches a curveball and a swing and a miss. Joe Liss was going for the distance on that one, but he missed. Hontaveras at third, De Jesus at short, Rosello at second, Bittner at first. The pitch, a swing and there's a long foul fly ball down the left field line. In left field is. Gene Kleins in place of the injured Cardinal. Wallace is in center field. As Franks, the skipper of the Cubs, giving Morales a rest. And we have Gross in right, as Mercer is the designated hitter today. The pitch, inside, backed him away from the plate. Full count now on Joe Liss. Meyer. At first, takes his lead. Kruko checks him. Here's the pitch. He went around, didn't hold back. He's called out on strikes. Joe don't believe it, but that's his call behind the plate, Barnett. And he called it for a strikeout. Four strikeouts now for Kruko. 
Two outs. And now here's Bavakwa, the young shortstop. The Mariners drafted Grant Jackson, the veteran left-handed pitcher, and then traded him to Pittsburgh for two infielders, Sexton, who's playing today, and a boy by the name of Reynolds. Craig Reynolds played at Charleston and hit 290 last year with 47 RBIs, but they say he's quite a glove man. And Johnson likes him tremendously at that shortstop position. Here's Bovacqua. And the first pitch is a let up into the dirt taken by Middlewall. Ball one. Cubs lead 16 to 1. Now time is called as Middlewall trots out to his pitcher and gives him some instructions as to what he is doing wrong, if he's doing anything wrong with that let up. And talking to young Kruko, of course just telling him what he's trying to do behind the plate and calling for particular type of pitches with a 16 to 1 lead this perhaps well Kruko may go five innings today he's had an easy game thus far here's a fastball swing and a miss by Bavakwa one and one the count and Meyer with a lead at first. Here's the pitch. There's another let up, but it's inside. And it's ball two, strike one. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Kruko looks over his left shoulder at Meyer at first. Bittner behind him. The pitch, fastball, a swing, and a fly ball deep to center field. That's well tagged. Wallace going back near the wall. It's against the wall right next to the 425-foot marker. There goes Bavakwa to third, and the relay gets past the shortstop and second baseman, and Kurt Bavakwa really tagged one. Hit one against the wall, right at the 425-foot marker that scores Myers from first base, and it's a triple for Bavakwa. Well, now it's 16-2, and Jim Sexton, the hitter. Bavakwa this spring has hit 500. He has one for two right here, even though he's only been to bat eight times. He has four for eight. Two RBIs. First pitch to Sexton is a curveball for a strike. Two hits in the innings for Seattle. Two strikeouts for Kruko. Now he's ready. Takes his wind up. The pitch to Sexton. Fastball swing. A one hopper right to Rosello. At second he has it. Throws the first three outs. Ball is hit well. The right to Rosello. In the fourth inning for Seattle. One run. Two hits. One man left on base. At the end of four. It's Cubs 16. Seattle 2. Fans, when you think about it, signs are important to the ebb and flow of any baseball game. There's a sign for hit and run. Signs to steal. But a whole lot more to remember. Now, when it comes to the ebb and flow of beer drinking, there's only one sign that you have to remember, and that's the sign on bottles or cans of Heilman's Old Style. What gives this beer its great light flavor? Well, Old Style is brewed in God's country where the skies are clear, the air is clean and crisp, and the sparkling pure Wisconsin spring water flows from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. With water like this, when you brew a beer once, you've got a good beer. But when you brew a beer twice, you've got a great light beer. This double brewing, pure brewing process is called croisoning. And Heilman's Old Style is one American premium beer that is still fully croisoned, naturally carbonated in the old world way. Old Style, beer brewed in God's country. Well, the Cubs batting around in the third and fourth inning. In the third, putting six runs on the board, and in the fourth, putting five, and sort of put this one away. It's 16 to 2 now, and we're moving along to the top of the fifth inning. The Cubs will send Wallace, Kleins, and Middlewall to the plate. No action in the Cubs' bullpen, so Kuko will go on for another inning. Well, we see uh, young Bill Wrigley here. 
Bob Kennedy sitting behind the screen. Joe Brown, formerly general manager of the Pirates, is here. And several scouts are taking this one in. First pitch to Wallace inside, ball one. The next pitch is a strike call. One and one to count now on Joe. He has one for one. He's walked twice. The pitch is inside, ball two. John Montague at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a good letter. Count now, ball one. Strike two to Joe. Montague into the windup. The pitch swing and a ground ball. Second baseman's left. It's through in the right field as Sexton did not move too quickly to his left. And that ball did come up at the last minute for him. But it just skidded under his glove for a base hit. So Wallace has two for two. And that's the first hit off Montague. And the 17th for the Cubs today. Now here's Kleins at bat. One for three. One RBI. The pitch. Fastball outside. And once again, Jetsy has to jump out to the right to glove the baseball. Ball one. Meyer holding Wallace on at first. Here's a swing and another base hit to right field. Wallace round second base. He's going to go to third. Here is Stanton's throw to third. Cut off by the shortstop. So Wallace slides into third safely. Kleins just merely reached out and poked that one to right field, sending Wallace to third. 18 hits for the Cubs here in this ball game. And now here is Minnewald, who has three for three, two RBIs. 16 to two, Cubs, fifth inning. Cubs have their hitting clothes on today, using the right bats also, and finding the spots, the empty spots in that outfield. First pitch to Minnewald is a fastball for a strike as he was backing away from that pitch. Strike one. Cubs with runners on first and third. Nobody out. The stretch, the pitch by Montague, a swing and a tap foul. Now we see Keller warming up with Putman down the right field line. Adams hollers down there for another youngster to start warming up. Pitch into the dirt box by Jetski. And the count now is ball two, strike one. Montague, the third Seattle pitcher on the mound. Looks in, gets his sign, checks the runners. Wallace is at third. Kleins is at first. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Minnerwall strikes out on a high inside fastball. That is the first strikeout for Montague. Now here is Davey Rosello at bat. Rosello has two for three, one RBI today. The stretch by Montague, the pitch, swing and a line drive to left field. Smith is there, Wallace tagging up. Here's Smith's throw, it goes to third base, and Wallace scores standing up. So the Cubs score their 17th run of this ball game, and uh, that is the first off of Montague, and Rosello lined that ball very sharply, to Smith in left field. So Rosello gets another RBI, his second of the day. Here's the shortstop, DeJesus. He has one for three, two RBIs. Kynes remained at first base. First pitch, let up, low, blocked by Jutsey, ball one. Kleins takes the lead at first base. As Montague into the stretch, the pitch strike call. A fastball over the outside corner. One run in. Cubs now enjoying 
A 17 to 2 lead. There's a swinging. No, he holds back in time. The ace was almost was biting after that curveball. It worked outside, but he held back just in time. Ball two, strike one. Now the count. Two outs, fifth inning. The stretch and the pitch. There's a strike call over the outside corner, just nipping the corner, and it's two and two. Meyer holding Kleins on it. At first, as Montague gets his sign, the pitch, swinging a ground ball right back to the pitcher. He gloves it, turns, throws to first, and the Aces closes out the fifth inning with only one run scoring, two hits, one man left on base. Now, with the Seattle Mariners coming to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning, it's Cup 17, Seattle 2. We have several changes in the Cubs uh, lineup, a new uh, second base shortstop combination. We have Thompson, young Thompson, at first base. Kleins has moved in from left field to uh, third base. Bittner's moved. No, Gross is in right. Here's the pitch by Kruko to Jetsy. We have a new left fielder. And a new uh, shortstop. Here's the pitch by Kruko. It's swinging a ground ball, base hit in the left field. So Jetsy opens up the fifth inning with a base hit. That is the fourth hit, fifth hit, I should say. Jim Dwyer. Off Kruko. Jim Dwyer is in left field. The pitch is swing and a miss by the number 44, Delgado, the hitter. Right handed here, close stance. Kruko into the stretch. Here's the pitch. It's low. It gets away from Putman, the catcher, and uh, Jutsey will advance to second base. That will be a pass ball. As the Cubs making quite a few changes here. Dwyer in left. Simber is at short. Kelleher at second. And Kleins has moved in from left field to third base. Thompson is the new first baseman. The pitch. Curveball for a strike call to beauty. This will be Kruko's last inning of work. And he's done a fine job thus far, allowing only two runs and five hits. Here's the stretch, the pitch, curveball, swing and a miss. And that is the fifth strikeout for Kruko. And here's Tommy Smith, the left fielder, stepping into the batter's box. One out, Jutsi at second base. Cubs lead 17-2 if you've just joined us. Scoring one in the first, four in the second, six in the third, five in the fourth, and one in the fifth. First pitch to Smith. Swing and a foul right into the glove of Putman. Strike one. Smith, left-handed hitter. 0 for 2 thus far. Kruko into the stretch. Checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch on its way. A fastball inside. One and one. Looks like Joe Decker warming up in the Cubs bullpen. Here's the pitch. Curveball low. Smith is batting here with one out in the fifth inning. Jetsy at second base. It's ball two, strike one to Tommy Smith. Joe Decker will be the next Cub pitcher. Kruko looks in, shakes his head yes on the sign. And now here's the pitch. A let up. A swing and a ground ball past the second baseman into right field for a base hit. Jetsy will score. And Smith drives in the his first RBI of this game. And it's now 17 to 3. 
That is the sixth hit of Kuko. And here's here's Bernhardt, young third baseman for Seattle. He's 0 for 2. He takes the first pitch curveball strike called. Kuku has been getting the curveball over today. And with that curveball, if he continues to improve and develop, he could be the surprise of the Cubs' spring training camp. Fastball for a strike over the outside corner. 0-2 now the count. Cubs with Kleins at third. Moving in from left field. Here's a pitch that gets far outside, away from Putman. The wild pitch sends Smith to second base. Kuko, of course, at this stage of the game, might be getting tired. This is the father that he has gone thus far. Here's the pitch on its way now to Bernhardt. Curveball, tap, foul. One ball, two strikes now. Smith with a lead at second base. Kuko sets the pitch. High fastball. Bernhardt will be followed by Lee Stanton. And then Dan Meyer. We're in the fifth inning, one out. One run in for Seattle. Cubs lead 17-2. to two. The pitch inside. Full count now as Kruko shows a little tiredness on the mound. But with this lead, of course, Herman Franks, Barney Schultz will hopefully say that he has done a great job. Here's a curveball, a swing, a five ball in left field. Dwyer's coming in. He gloves it for the out. Two outs here in the fifth inning. And now Lee Stanton will bat. Stanton tripled to open up the second inning. Scored the first Seattle run. Then he was called out on strikes in the fourth. Tommy Smith is still on second base now. Of the six hits given up by Kruko, there has been two triples and one double. Now the right-handed hitter, Stanton, into the batter's box. First pitch by Kruko. Instead, he steps back off of the mound. Now he's ready. The pitch inside, ball one. Stanton, the right-handed hitter, good power, and he'll hit to all fields. He checks his swing, the ball hits the bat, and it's a little pop-up drop by the shortstop. Kleins picks it up, throws very poorly at first base, it goes against the wall, the run will score, there could be two errors on that play. Simber came in to glove the ball on the fly, and he dropped it as it hit the tip of the glove, and as it went beyond the shortstop, Kleins picked it up and fired to first base. It's an error on the shortstop, but the man on first, Stanton, did not advance to second as the ball rebounded right back to Thompson, so there'll only be one error on the play. And, but the run scores 17-4 to four now. It comes in the lead. Here's a swing and a pop foul. Back of the plate by Meyer. Meyer has two for two. Left-handed hitter with one RBI. He stretched by Kruko. Here's a pitch, a fastball inside, just missing. One and one to count. The score? Cubs 17, Seattle 4. The pitch on its way. Curveball, a swing and a line drive to center field. In comes Wallace. He clubs it. Knee high for the out and on the run. In the fifth inning for Seattle, 
two runs, two hits, one air, one man left on base. At the end of five, Cubs 17, Seattle 4, 2-0. Let's fly to Mupu Draw from Tempe, Arizona. And this is uh, one of those that has some of the fans out here almost lulled to sleep. Bright sunshine and a lopsided score. There have been a lot of lopsided scores out here in many of the spring training games. Not only those involving the Cubs, but a lot of the teams out here. And they may have wind up setting a record for total runs scored out here in the games this year before it's all over with. Of course, that won't be for the Cubbies until the 5th of April. That'll be a game we'll be broadcasting to you. Jimmy Dwyer came into play uh, left field in the fifth inning. Is now coming to bat for the first time today. Left-handed batter. John Montague in the mound, the third Seattle pitcher of the afternoon. Winds, delivers, Dwyer takes a strike. Fastball right at the knees to him. Down the air tomorrow afternoon, of course. Our regular time on uh, most of our broadcasts out here. Curveball, swung out of miss. Dwyer finds himself in the hole. Strike two count. And prior to our broadcast tomorrow, Mike Pyle is going to have Jack Marin from the Chicago Bulls on as his guest on Sports Sunday. Dwyer, three for nine. The spring swings and a little looper over the shortstop's head, but it's out to Tommy Smith, the left fielder, who hauls it in easily. And there's one gone in the sixth inning. Cubs have scored in each of the first five this afternoon. Greg Gross, who's got a couple of hits in four bats and has batted in three runs today, steps into the batter's box, playing in right field. Montague, a big right-hander. Spent some years with Montreal. Fastball, in for a strike call. For opening day, when the Cubs take on the Mets at Wrigley Field, stop by the ticket office to be sure you've got good tickets. A curve swung on a one-hopper, back to Montague. The pitcher has it, turns, throws, two gone. Bobby Mercer, who failed to get a base hit his first three times up today as a designated hitter, finally singled and drove in his first run of spring training in the fourth. He's one for four today. Five for 16 for the spring. Wrigley Field box office will be open Monday through Friday from 9 o'clock in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. Fastball. Bobby takes it inside. Saturdays, they'll be open from 9 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. Stop by and get your good tickets. Wind up the pitch. Breaks a little too low. All one. Strike two. Two gone and the bases are empty. Joy to see Michigan knocked out in that NCAA basketball tournament. Fastball. It's too low. It's been a wide open affair this year. Lined up the pitch. He swings at a ground ball to the second baseman. Sexton has it. Up with the peg over to the first baseman, Danny Meyer. And what do you know? The Cubs go down in order. And it's the first time today that's happened. It's also the first time they have not been able to score. So we move swiftly along to the bottom of inning number six with Seattle coming to bat. And the score, the Cubs, 17, Seattle, four. Trade mechanics touch an auto. Before that, they put it through their sophisticated data processing machine, and out comes all the information on the previous repair. Well, now that you've wet everyone's appetite, you better give them the address. Yeah, let's see. Fireside Chrysler Plymouth, they're out out there on Golf Road, just west of that fabulous Woodfield Shopping Center in Schomburg. And there's no doubt about it, fans. From sale to service, Fireside really takes care of its customers. Boy, this one is going. The Cubs are going to have to keep Bill Wrigley out here. As a good luck, uh, Omen. I think this is the first uh, game that he's seen the Cubbies play out in Arizona this spring. Probably can't believe his eyes. 17 to 4. Joe Decker, at the beginning of last year, was with the Minnesota Twins, and then he wound up pitching in the minors at Evansville, I believe it was, and that's where Bob Kennedy, who is now, of course, the Cubs general manager, 
Saad Decker, pitch. And with the uh, obvious shortage of good pitching talent in the ball club this year, Kennedy invited Decker to training camp out here. Uh, see whether or not he can make it. He'll be facing the right-hander, Joe List, the designated hitter, who so far today has hit one solidly in the nose, but it was a liner to the left fielder at that time, but it's Klein's. Then in the fourth inning, he struck out. So Mike Kruko worked five good innings today. Gave up a half a dozen hits. Four runs, struck out four, walked one. One run coming in an air. First pitch by Decker, and the right-hander gets a strike. And broadcast tomorrow, Rick Russell is scheduled to be the starting pitcher for the Cubs. Wind up in Decker's pitch. This takes a strike on the outside corner. So he's jumped out in front. This is Joe's third appearance for the Cubs on the Hill this spring. He has won one and lost one. Wines, delivers. Strike, three called. Pitch is dropped by the catcher, Putman. He picks it up, steps well out in front of the plate, throws down to the first baseman, Scott Thompson, for the out. Joe Liss, the strikeout victim. And with one gone, Kirk Bavakwa will be the hitter. Crippled in the fourth inning after... Grounding out for the shortstop his first time up. Right at a batter. Boy, there have been some wild scores. Not only involving the Cubs. Joe Decker's fastball misses low and outside to the right-handed hitter. Bright, beautiful, sunshiny day once more here in Arizona. They've had four tenths of an inch of rain. It's the 1st of January. Wanted to bunt that ball that he missed. Ball one, strike one. <clears throat> Gene Pines is now over at third base. Mike Sember, a rookie, is at short. Mick Kelleher is at second base. Scott Thompson, a rookie, at first. Ed Putman doing the catching now. With Jimmy Dwyer out in left field. Joe Wallace in center. Greg Gross in right. And Decker's pitch swung out. Pulls the ground ball to the shortstop. Off his chest. Goes over to his left side, and Mike Simber cannot make the play on that one, so Babakwa is going to be on what should be an error. He had a little trouble catching a pop-up in the fifth inning. Matter of fact, he dropped it. Here's Jimmy Sexton, who was in the minors last year. He's 0 for 2 today, and has not showed much of a bat for Seattle so far this spring with two hits in 13 trips. Runner at first. Big curve. Misses. Ball one. Decker's looked pretty good so far this spring. Boy, how he'd like to make a comeback. Used to be with the Cubs, you would recall. Has he signed? Here's a stretch. They're not holding the run around. There's a swing and a bouncing foul. Skips into the dugout of Seattle over behind third base. And the count on Jimmy Sexton, the right-handed hitters. Ball one, strike one. You going to wear that bonnet on ladies' bonnet day? Yes, sir. With another about 10,000 young ladies <laughs> and uh, elderly women wearing them. They're great. Playing in a foul, back out of play. They are similar to what you're wearing. Good luck. They're good luck Hold bonnets. The gals could even sit on them. Seventeen to four. Oh, this should happen so often during the season, huh? And a one-two pitch swung out. A high fly ball coming over forward is Jimmy Dwyer near the foul line. It drops in front of him, bounces over his glove. He picks it up. Here's the runner going from first to third. Dancing into second base is Jimmy Sexton. They give him a double. There they have runners at second and third with one away. Mr. Danny K, your ball club is coming back. Hello, Danny. (laughs) (laughs) We are lifting ourselves from the ground and we will go down to glorious defeat. Talk about being thrilled. Be uh, in the major leagues as one of the principal owners of this ball club. 
I've heard Great so much about his cooking, but never get invited over to his apartment or place. He doesn't really cook it. He goes out there to let's Guatemala. Talk about, let's talk a little about cooking. <laughs> he goes out to Guatemala Harry's, picks up their Mexican food, and then he takes it back. And he, and he says he did it. Not Danny. Goodbye, Danny. Glad to see him. Good luck to you. Be all right. Be all right. That's right. Oh, did you? Fine. Hope you include... For the World the Series? Yeah. Got the World Series rings already? Or the only day ring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's ordered the ring. <laughs> I would have... Well, I like, I like their theory of getting as many young kids as they can in building. There's a swing and a ground ball going to the second baseman. Run is going to score on this one. And that makes it a 17 to 5 ball game, but they get the out at first base and Skip Jesse slaps an easy grounder to Mick Kelleher. That brings in Bivacqua, who had reached on the air. And Sexton goes over to third. We have Louis Delgado, the hitter. I would have to say that before the season is finished in Seattle, the Seattle fans will see Danny Kay in uniform and out on that field in one way, shape, or another. There's no doubt about it that he's going to be on that field. Loves it. Oh, he yeah. loves it. Delgado in the batter's box in the first pitch. Will on hander is a strike. Van Lingo Mungo. And then he will be suspended by the commissioner and he will appeal. <laughs> and win. And win. And win. And the fastball for a strike. Nothing at two. Their advanced ticket sales up there in Seattle are going well. And their season ticket sales. That's the Dome Stadium up in Seattle, Washington. That probably draw very well this year. Decker from the windup of the man in third. A swing and a bouncing ball over his head. Speared by the shortstop behind second. Here's the peg over to first. And Mike Simbers tosses in time to Scott Thompson to retire Seattle in the sixth. They pick up a run. It is not earned. One hit, one error. And a man left on the bases. So at the end of six innings of play, it is still a very comfortable and fast lead for the Chicago Cubs. 17-5. to five. Chicago. Scott Thompson this is the young man who they had trouble signing this year to a minor league contract he had himself an agent the whole ball of wax but they finally got his name inked he very likely is going to be assigned to Wichita left handed hitter swings he got under that ball hits a very high pop up to the shortstop he's got it that shoulder about two feet trying to crank one out. With all of the hits today, there's not been a home run. Pete Tugon in the seventh inning. Clines will be the hitter. Now playing over at third base. He has a couple of hits today and four at bats has batted in a run and scored two. Cubs got single runs in the first and fifth inning. Got four in the second. Six in the third and five in the fourth. He reaches out, hits a fly ball to the right fielder. Should be easy. Stanton is there. He's got it. Well, it's three up and three down. And Montague has retired the last nine Cubs that he's faced. Looks tough. Seattle fans will stand for the seventh inning uh, stretch. The Cub fans already have had theirs. And at the end of six and a half here in Tempe, Arizona, it's the Cubs 17, Seattle 5. You know, Lou, I think Al Gaines travels about as much as we do out of those car buying trips he takes to Detroit every other week. Hey, Smith has to be the first man up. He's the number two man in the batting order. He'll be followed by Juan Bernhardt and Lee Stanton. Joe Decker finishing his warm up tosses. He came out at the start of the sixth inning, got a strikeout, a couple of ground outs, gave up one hit, and the Cubs were guilty of an error behind him, and that led to a run. Not earned. Well, let's see what Joseph can do. Tommy Smith. Big guy, 6'3", left-handed hitter. Singled and scored in the fifth inning. Drove in a run. He's one for three for the day. They got a couple of hits off Mike Kruko in the second inning. There's a swing and a ground ball. Cut her quickly to the first base side. Mick picks it up. And the toss is in plenty of time to retire Tommy Smith. One gone, nobody on. Juan Bernhardt will be the hitter. The Cubs got a run in the first on one hit, a walk, a stolen base. They got four runs in the second on four hits. 
three runs in the or six runs in the third on six hits, they batted around. Five runs on five hits in the fourth, and they batted around. And the windup of the pitch, a curve broke, but not enough. It missed the inside corner. Ball, one count on young man for Puerto Rico, Juan Bernhardt, right-handed hitter. Stance squared away. Decker kicks, fastball swung on, and a little soft liner that's going to drop out into right center field for a base hit. Hit number two off of Jill. Eight hits for the day for Seattle. And Lee Stanton, a right-hander who tripled, leading off the second inning, and scored on uh, the double by Danny Meyer steps in. He is one for three. Lee Stanton. Been a little bit of time a few years ago with the Mets. Decker in the stretch. Fastball. Low and outside. Ball one. There's still a lot of talk out here as to whether or not the Cubs are going to be making any more deals, particularly for help in the pitching department before they get back to Wrigley Field. Decker's curveball swung on and popped up into shallow center field. Coming way in for it is Tyrus Wallace. He, and he loses the ball in the sun. Saw him put those glasses down, and that is when I think he lost it. Kelleher had started out, but the ball was, he thought, way out of his range. Carson was there, but he lost it in the bright Arizona sunshine. Cubbies have been charged with their fourth error of the day. And Stanton has reached twice as a result of them. Runners at first and second with one out. Left-hander, young Danny Meyer. Into the batter's box. Used to be with Detroit. Takes the fastball low and inside for ball one. Young Ed Putman is doing the catching. Herman Franks will repeat says there's nothing wrong physically with Swisher. We hear otherwise that he's still being bothered with the sore shoulder. Runners at first and second here is a stretch in the pitch. Low and inside. Way off the mark with that one, and he's dropped behind. Two and all. Let's see if Joe can successfully pitch from behind. One out, runners at first and second. 17 to 5 score. Here's the pitch. Took a little off the curve, and he missed it outside. So he's got himself a bag of trouble out there. 3 0 the count. See if they might give this kid the green light on 3 0 with runners at first and second. Well, they are, of course, way behind in the ballgame. They need a flock of base runners. He takes, hits a strike. 1,144, the paid attendance this afternoon, which is about 700 more than these two clubs drew the first time they played here at Tempe. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here on WGN Radio, Chicago. Jack Minovich, our producer. Don Michelson, our engineer. And we hope you're enjoying it. If you're a Cup fan, you got to be happy with the score. Here's a swing and a little looper that's going to drop out of the left center field. It's in there for a base hit. Here's a man coming to the plate, and the throw will be too late. He scores. They have runners at first and second, and it's 17. The six. Danny Meyer drives at his second run of the afternoon with his third hit of the day. Runners at first and second. Second hit of the inning. And the third off of Joe Decker. Well, now let's stop this nonsense and get him out. Designated hitter, right-hander, Joe Liss. 0 for 3 today. Has fanned twice. Once against Decker. He swings and misses. Joe came over the top of that one, and it broke down and away to the right-hander. Has shown great power in the minors. At 30 home runs last year for Toledo. Stance is closed. Seattle runners at first and second. They're batting in the seventh inning. Decker's pitch. Low and outside. That ball broke away from him, and he wouldn't chase it this time. So the count goes to one and one. Mike File with Jack Merritt on Sports Sunday tomorrow at 12.30 in Chicago on WGN. 
following our broadcast of the game is the sports writer show. Curve. Didn't break enough. It was high and tight. Ball two, strike two. One gone. Seattle runners at first and second in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here's a stretch of the pitch. One after it, fouled it back against the backstop, and then it caromed off of that wire fence over to the box seats near the cup dugout on the first base side. Ball two, strike two on Joe Liss. German in three runs this spring, but he has only three hits and 11 at bats. There's a swing and a drive that's fouled on the left field side. Pulled the string on him a bit. He was still way out in front of it and lined a foul. So it's ball two, strike two. Right-hander, Joe Liss against the right-handed pitcher, Joe Decker. Be a good time for a double play. And Ed Putman, the young catcher, gives the side to Decker. They take a little bit too much time, and Joe Liss steps out of the batter's box. Now we're ready to go. And the pitch swung on. He lets a high, deep fly ball to left field. Back goes Jimmy Dwyer. Back to the wall. It is over the wall. A three-run homer. Joe Decker came inside. And Joe Lynch, who hit 30 home runs for Toledo last year, has just hit his first one for the Seattle Mariners with two mates aboard. Going out about 380 feet away. Enough is enough. He did what a designated hitter is supposed to do. And he's suddenly gone from three runs by the end the spring to six. Number two, Kirk Four runs in the inning. It is now 17 to nine. And Kirk Mavakla swings and fouls it back for strike one. Decker winds. Curve. Strike call. Need calculators to figure the totals on this one. And we're only in the seventh. Look up at the scoreboard where they wanted to hold up in that swing and he couldn't do it. The ball was breaking sharply away from him and he fouled it back out of play. They have the lights on and the scoreboard to show the uh, scores in the inning and the runs and the hits and with that bright sun flashing on them from our angle sometimes very tough to pick up those numbers like they had that same trouble over at uh, Mesa when the Cubs were training over there several years ago here's a swing at a ground ball past the pitcher but the second baseman Kelleher's up with it long stretch by the first baseman pulls his foot off the bag and the runner is safe the throw was a a little soft and a bit up the line towards home plate. And big Scott Thompson, the rookie, tried to glove the ball, tried to make the long stretch and keep a foot in the bag, but he just couldn't quite come up with it. So there's still only one out, and they have a man at first base. It's going to be another error. The fifth boot of the day by the Cubs, officially. Here's Jimmy Sexton, the eighth man in the batting order. If you're going it was his first two times up, this kid doubled. And Decker throws a curve that misses inside for ball one. In case you missed it, we announced earlier, Jimmy Todd, newest acquisition by the Cubs from Oakland this week for Joe Coleman, agreed to terms a two-year contract for right into relief pitcher Jimmy Todd. Decker's pitch, strike called, fastball in the inside corner. But the pitching has been very spotty. And I think I'm giving the Cubs the best of it when I say it's been spotty. There's a swing and a foul that thumps off the catcher, Eddie Putnam. Ball one, strike two. 
Sexton, three for 14 this spring for Seattle. He's playing at second base in this ballgame. A boxcar score on the board. 70 to 9. Here's a pitch, and he looks at a strike, and he can't believe it. He's really hot. And I got to say, from here, that pitch would have looked like it was way low and way outside. Yes, yes it was. There's no doubt about it. We're right directly behind the plate. I think Barnett really missed that one. <laughs> well, maybe he's getting tired of standing down there all the time. <laughs> Two gone. Skip Jesse. Mustachioed right handed hitting catcher. Steps into the batter's box. He's walked, doubled, and grounded out so far today. Scored a run. Here's the pitch. Strike a fastball. Runner still on at first base. Veda Pinson, former refined outfielder, coaching down there. And a great outfielder for many years in the majors. Jim Busby coaching at third. Here's the pitch. Swung on a line drive over Decker's head in the center field. And runners at first and second. Skip Jesse lines a single. Well, they keep it going with a score 17 to 9, two out. It's now the top of the batting order, and this young man, Louis Delgado, is still looking for his first hit of the day. He's all for four and has fanned twice. And he started the day with 11 hits and a 458 spring trading average. But they've cut him off so far. Looks at a strike at curveball. Four hits so far in this inning for Seattle, including Joe Liss's three-run homer. Something like 30 hits so far in the game. He reaches out after that pitch and taps a foul ball back to the third base side of the screen behind the plate. We mentioned Rick Russell is slated to start tomorrow's ball game, and Rick earned run average is six for the uh, season so far with six innings of work nine hits four runs we know he can do better than that there's a swing and a high foul out of play right side Ray Burris has really been hit hard his last two starts after looking just great in the first game of the exhibition season which we broadcast he was perfect since then wow Decker stretched and pitch swung on. He throws his bat at that let up pitch, but taps one to the shortstop, and it's an easy force play on Jutsey at second base to retire the side. But they send seven men to the plate, or nine men to the plate in the seventh inning and come up with four runs on four hits. A couple of errors in the inning by the Cubs. Two men left on. And so at the end of seven, it is the Cubs 17 and Seattle 9. Ted Putman spent most of last year at Wichita caught played first base he's replaced Metterwall behind the plate today Husky kid, a native of Los Angeles. He's always been cup property. He takes the first pitch from Montague for a strike. Wichita last year, he hit uh, 273. Earlier in the season, he was at Midland, hit 293. Three for seven in a brief stint with the Cubs. Montague's next pitch is a curve that's low and away. Ball one, strike one. Cubs selected. Putman in the uh, January free agent draft. There's a slow curve for a strike call. The recommendation of Gene Hanley, who does this job of scouting on the West Coast for the Cubs. Ball one, strike two. 17 to nine, ball game. Cubs are leading. Fastball, low and away. Two and two now on the right handed hitting Putman. First trip up the plate this afternoon. Mitterwald did all right. He was three for four. Drove in a couple of runs. There's a swing and a miss. He got him. Well, Montague now is retired. 
A six, nine, ten Cub batters in succession. He came on a relief in the fourth inning when the Cubs had ten men come to the plate. Mickey Kelleher steps into the batter's box. His first trip up today. Mick, of course, has uh, played some shortstop second, and he can play some third. Wound up as the Cubs as a shortstop last year. He has not carried a magic wand to the plate this spring. He has one hit in 13 at bats. There's a strike called fast curveball. Wind up a Montague, the delivery. Fastball misses inside to him. In the on deck circle of the young shortstop, Mike Sember will be making his first trip to the plate this afternoon. The wind up in Montague's next pitch to Kelleher, a ball a little bit low. Oh, he's gotten behind on the hitter. 17 to 9 score, comes out in front. About 30 hits so far in the game. One of them a homer, a three run shot by Seattle's Joe Liss. Fastball, strike called on him. Caught the outside corner to Larry Barnett. Johnny Kebler and uh, Ed Montague from the National League working uh, on the bases along with big, colorful Ron Luciano. Here's a swing and a ground ball. The shortstop is over there and it goes right under his foot between his legs to center field. That's a whoops. Kurt Pavakla is charged with an error. And it'll bring up young Mike Simber. First time today. Mike is one for five, so obviously he has not had much work this spring, and chances are he's going to wind up with Wichita during the 77 season. Right-handed hitter, and he looks at a strike. This has not been one of those truly great artistic performances by either ball club today. A batch of errors, bigger batch of uh, base hits, and a slow curve outside. Mike uh, comes from outside Chicago at Hammond, Indiana. Stretch the pitch. Strike right at the knees to him. And he has always been the property of the Cubs. Graduated from Bishop Noel Institute in Hammond and majored in broadcasting at the University of Tulsa. Is a strike call. When he takes too many pitches like that, he's going to be in broadcasting in a hurry. Faster than he wanted to be. There, the, the permitted Kelleher to reach ended that string of uh, John Montague's, where he had retired 10 in succession. That strikeout is the third that he has posted here in relief today. Jimmy Dwyer stepping into the batter's box, left-hander. Playing now in uh, left field, came into play in the fifth inning, and he's flat out to left field his first time up. Takes the ball, it's outside, and the count on Jimmy Dwyer. Ball one, no strikes. The Chicago native run up on that one's a little bit high. Dwyer three for nine in the spring with two runs batted in. Walked three times. He struck out twice in nine in ten at bats now, including today. Right-hander John Montague in the hill. Cup runner at first base. Here's the pitch. Dwyer takes a fastball low and inside. Jose Cardinal, still suffering from a sore knee, and that is the knee that Jose injured late in the 1976 season. A little ligament damage. It's a strike call. And he may be bothered with that off and on throughout this season. Bill Buckner, not sure when he's going to be uh, in action. He's been doing a little bit of running the last couple of days. Throw to first. Runner is back safely standing. One of these days, we expect to see a lineup in that field that would resemble the one you expect to see opening day. There's a swing and a miss. Drilled himself a little hole in the ground, spinning around, trying to get a hold of that one. But he came up with fresh Arizona air. Now the count is full at three and two. Two gone, the runner will go. He does, pitch inside, he checks his swing, the ball gets by the catcher and goes to the backstop. 
Kelleher was just jogging to uh, second base, and he pulls up there. It's a walk to Dwyer, putting runners at first and second. Greg Gross will be the hitter. Get into a double play in the third inning, but he has also batted in three runs. He's got a couple of hits. He's two for five. Cubs have been kind of coasting the last couple of innings. If they could afford to. They still have 17 runs, while Seattle has nine. It's been that kind of a day. Greg steps out of the batter's box for a moment. Cubs got him, of course, from Houston. And he figures to be a very consistent hitter. There's the pitch to him. He takes a strike at the knees, a good fastball. Cubs set a rookie infielder, Julio Gonzalez, to the Houston Astros for Gross. Two gone, runners at first and second. Strike one, pitch swung out. He pulls one down to the first baseman. Should have it. He does, and that will retire the Cubs in the eighth with no runs. No hits, one error, and two men left in the bases. So Seattle comes to bat here at Tempe, Arizona, bottom of the eighth inning. It is still the Cubs 17, Seattle 9. It's the kind of a game, of course, that the kids really love. Lot, lots of base runners, lots of hits, lots of action all the time. The purists that say, hey, that's no ball game. Jimmy Todd. Now on the hill for the Cubs. First pitch swung on at a ground ball to the second baseman, Kelleher. He's up with it, and Sammy Smith retired in the first pitch in the eighth inning. This is Jimmy's first appearance with the Cubs since they got him earlier this week from Oakland for Joe Coleman. And he agreed to terms before the game today. He says it was a two-year contract. Right hander stepping into the batter's box is Juan Bernhardt, and he takes a little high, ball one. Todd Wines, the big right hander, his next pitch, a swing and a miss. He'll throw a sinker. Or those who would accuse Jimmy of throwing a spitball. He may have in the past, but now that he's wearing a Cub uniform, you can be sure he will not throw it. Wind up in the pitch. Goes after one. Fouls it back out of play. That ball was rising on the hitter. There was some speculation as to whether or not Jimmy Todd had been held out of action the last part of the 76th season when he was with Oakland because he might have arm trouble. He says, no, nope, that was not it at all. They just didn't let him work. Says he's perfectly healthy. Here's the windup and the 0-2 pitch swung on. Ground ball and right under the glove of Todd. Bubbled by the shortstop. Simber, who is not finding this field exactly to his liking. He's dropped pop-ups. And another ball got away from him. And here after this one went right between Jimmy Todd's legs and under his glove, Simber appeared to be Johnny on the spot. He was. But he couldn't pick up the ball either. So Bernhard is on. There's two of the Cubbies take a stab at the ball, but can't come up with it. That'll be an error. And Lee Stanton steps in. Right-hander takes. It's a strike. Stanton has been on twice as a result of errors and once with a triple. A veteran. Should help this ball club. Todd was taking almost too much time for it. Now we're ready to go. Here's a stretch of the pitch. Fastball. Sunk sharply and missed the strike zone. Blown away. Todd looks over at first, delivers. There's a swing and a miss. Ball sunk pretty sharply. Seventeen to nine is the score. In case you just joined us, yes, the Cubs are leading, of course. Now Todd is ready. Stanton 
swings and a bouncing ball to the shortstop. How will he do this time? Okay so far, over to second for one, the relay, double play. See how easy it is? No runs, no hits. An error, wiped out with a double play. So we go to the ninth inning, and the Cubbies coming to back are still out in front of Seattle, 17 to 9. There are over 60 general offices in Chicagoland. Call friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to $10,000. Call in over 32020. Well, here in the ninth inning, Cubs are going to face a new pitcher, Roy Thomas. Tall, and I mean tall. He's 6'5". List him at 215. He looks even uh, way less than that. 23 years old. Born at Quantico, Virginia. Just down a little ways from uh, Washington, D.C. And, of course, it's been the headquarters for the United States Marine Corps as long as man can remember Quantico. Makes his home now on the other coast out of San Jose, California. Pitched last year in the minors in Iowa. Roy Thomas. Bobby Mercer, the designated hitter today for the Cubs in the batter's box. Montague did an excellent job. Pitched uh, four to third innings. And he gave up no runs. Thomas, big windup, and a swing and a miss by Mercer on the first pitch. As a DH today, Mercer has batted in a run with a single in the fourth inning. He's one for five. Here's a pitch to Bobby. Swung on, ground ball to the third baseman. He should get him. Up with the peg is Bernhardt. Almost right away. What a stab by Danny Meyer for out. Number one in the top of the ninth inning. And Scott Thompson will be the hitter. Remember opening day at Wrigley Field? Thursday, April the 7th, against the New York Mets. Then they'll be there on Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday, the 10th of April, will be Bonnet Day for the ladies at Wrigley Field. First of several promotions the Cubs will have this year. Thompson swings, the left-hander drives a fly ball into right center field for a base hit, a single. Oop, bubble, now picked up, thrown too late to second base. It'll be a single and an error. Dumped it out into right center field. Boy, with one out, what is it, nine errors today total? <laughs> close to it. There's been a few other mental errors too. Yeah. We won't add to it. You don't think this is the best ball game you ever saw? Not yet. But we've got to... Well, let's see. Five more outs to go. Ayers and Wallace takes the fastball and it just missed. Let's see. Tars today reached his first four times up with a pair of walks and a pair of singles and he scored four runs. And he finally grounded out in the seventh inning. The pitch. Left-handed hitter, and he takes it low. How about having your group out to Wrigley Field this year? Maybe your employees, huh? Low cost per person. Group outing at Wrigley Field. During the first home stand of the season, be a good time to do it against the Mets. The stretch of the pitch. Boy, this kid rears back, and he... He's got that ball way behind his right ear, and then he suddenly unleashes it. Kind of a buggy whip motion to that delivery of his. Runner at second base with one out in the ninth. That's too high and tight, and that will put Joe Wallace on base. He draws his third walk today. Fines will be the hitter now. He started the ball game in left field, and Gene has moved over to play third base. He has a couple of hits, a couple of runs scored, and a run batted in. So your group outing at Wrigley Field. Don't you worry at all about details. The guy to call is Ernie Banks, manager of group sales now at Wrigley Field. You can get him at EB71919. And ask for the Ernie Banks special group package. Curveball thrown wide. Ball one. 
That group sales staff will arrange for charter bus service. They'll see to it you all sit together at Wrigley Field in good, comfortable box seats. And have yourself some fun. There's the pitch swung on. Ground ball right past the pitcher. Spins off the dirt into center field. Runner coming around third. He's going to score. Shouldn't be a play on him. And the... Tried to cut it off at the mound, and the throw was off target. Got away, first baseman. But the catcher is there to pick it up. And Clines has himself another run batted in, his second today, and his third hit today. That only makes it 18 to 9. <laughs> Runners at first and second. Second hit of the inning off of the rookie right hander Roy Thomas. And that brings up Ed Putman. Struck out of the eighth inning against Montague. Cubs now with 20 base hits for the day. And an 18-9 to lead. Couldn't get a single extra point. Up to now. They better hurry it up or the sun is going to be setting. And they'll have to turn on the lights, which they have here. And it's comforting to know that they can turn on the lights in case they need them. Roy Thomas delivers. Strike in the outside corner. Dead Putman. Lewis, maybe you should call Ernie Banks and see if he can get a special for your bowling group. They'd love to come out, I know. Would they let them all in the park the same day? Well, they wouldn't be sober, and that'd be the only trouble, <laughs> I think. Now, I know that it's necessary for them to bowl at their peak efficiency have a little bit in them, but it, oh, you know, yeah. to go to the ball game, they could go uh, without that. They could, but they wouldn't. They'd look strange, I know that. <laughs> There's a swing and a miss. I know they'd bring their bowling balls to the ball game. Count <laughs> <laughs> on Putman is two and two. And there are two men on with one away in the ninth. An historic battle. 18-9. to nine. Curve very high. He started at about three feet over Putman's head, and it broke, and was still over his head. So a full count. And Cub Runners at first and second. Let's see if they might go with this. A look at second base. Right-handers pitch, they don't go, and a swing and a miss. So that is strike three, and they're two gone in the ninth. And stepping into the batter's box now for the Cubs is Mick Keller. Mick reached on an error in the eighth inning. His only time up so far today. Boy, Kentucky got knocked out of that NCAA tournament. Michigan knocked out of there. Wake Forest. North Carolina winner, North Carolina Charlotte a winner over Michigan. And a swing and a very high foul ball that's going to be out of play to the right side. Now we have to pull for Marquette to go all the way. That would be something. That would be great. Al McGuire has always had tough tournament teams. And in this is last year as head coach for the Warriors. It would be quite a way to go on. Saw the story out here a few years, a few days ago. The Bobby Orr, or not Bobby Orr, Johnny Orr, the coach of the Michigan Wolverines, were knocked out of that tournament, upset uh, by North Carolina. Shot it. Johnny's thinking that he may have to uh, give up the uh, coaching job for Michigan. Ulcers and pressure and everything else getting to him. That's too high. Ball one. There are runners at first and second. We're in the ninth inning with two out. Here's a pitch. Swung on, fouled. Back right up against the backstop. And this crowd is so silent here, you begin to wonder whether or not uh, you're attending a funeral service. Of course, it's 18-9. to 9. A lot of them are Seattle fans, and they really don't have all that much to cheer about. And there's a Dodger fan. 
That's what they were down in Florida. Here's the pitch. Goes after the fastball. Got it off the end of the bat and fouled it back up out of play. I got a hunch, Lewis, at this ballpark along about the middle of July when it gets a little warmish out here. Won't Those seats many. could be just yeah. a little bit hot, couldn't they? Wouldn't, won't be too many in the stands. They play <laughs> mostly at night under these fine lights. Yeah. One of the problems the Phoenix Giants have, uh, even though they've had some good teams, goes after that next pitch. It's high, and he hits a foul ball. It's going to be back into the seats over near the Cup Dog. One of the problems they have is in that real heat of the midsummer here, even at night, where they where they play all of their ball games over at the Phoenix Park at Dandy. It still is too high. John Michelson, our engineer, like most engineers, is the kind that you really can't rely on. He says, oh, no, no, it's never too hot. <laughs> Uh, he's working for the Chamber of Commerce. Now the pitch. And a fly ball going out to the left fielder. He's coming in for Tommy Smith is under it. Makes the catch in shallow left. Kelleher is retired, and the Cubbies in the ninth inning come up with one run. A couple of hits in the inning. A walk and an error. And they leave two men on. And we are now going into the bottom of the ninth. Here at Tempe, Arizona, it is the Cubs 18, Seattle 9. The first pitch in the bottom of the ninth is a ball. Low and inside. Left-handed hitter, Danny Myers. Swings and misses. Ball one, strike one on him. Fuzzy Bavese, top man of the San Diego Padres. Right under Ray Kroc, the chairman of the board of the ball club, is here taking in the game again today. There's a strike. Ball one, strike two. You know, you can charge your tickets on Master Charge or Bank AmeriCard for Cup games this year. First time ever. Here's the pitch. Jimmy Todd fires one, and it's tap foul over by the Cup dugout. Thursday, April 7th is the opener. Then Cubs and the Vets are scheduled to play again on Saturday, the 9th of April, and Sunday, the 10th of April, with the 10th being Ladies' Bonnet Day. Swing on an inside delivery pull foul down the third base side, or first base side. But tickets go on sale, of course, at the ballpark the morning of each game and advance sales now at the box office. And remember, you can charge it if you have Master Charge or Bank AmeriCard. The number to call for tickets at Wrigley Field is 281-5050. Give them a call, Bundy, huh? Here's the windup. One, two delivery. Swung on a shot. Down the first base side, it is inside the line, going down into the corner. And here is the runner, Danny Meyer, rounding second. He is going to go into third, and there will be no play on him, a stand-up triple. A blistering shot. Right past the colorful first base umpire, Big Ron Luciano. Well, he's having himself quite a day. Two singles, a double, and a triple. A couple of runs batted in. Two runs scored with a chance to make it three. Danny Meyer, who started today hitting 267 in spring training, has put umpteen points on his batting average. He started the day with four hits this spring. He now has eight. And he's four for five. Now the batter's box is Joe Liss, who hit a three-run homer in the seventh inning off Joe Decker. He's now facing Jimmy Todd, and he looks, hits a ball a little low. Jimmy from the windup. Here's the delivery. Ooh, good curve. Taken for a strike. Throws a fast curve ball. Ball one, strike one. Windup by the big guy. At the curve, this time it's way off the mark. Low and outside, ball two, strike one. Jimmy was really surprised when he got the news the other night that he had been uh, traded to the Cubs from Oakland. He thought he would never again get a chance to wear a Cub uniform. There's a swing and a high foul. It's back out of play. Change speeds on that curve a little bit. He was sent to Oakland a couple of years ago for Champ Summers. Now back with the Cubbies. Runner at third base. The windup in the pitch. This swings and foul tips it into Ed Putman's mitt for a strikeout. One away here in the ninth. Boy, we have had uh, 30, 
33 hits in this game? 20 by the Cubbies. I have 13, yeah. Or uh, 13 Seattle. by them. But Bakwa has one of them, a triple. He's stepping in now. He's been on twice with, on errors, too, and scored a run. Batted in one. Right hander takes. Todd misses outside. And the score, the Chicago Cubs. 19, Seattle, 8. Here's the windup. There's a swing and a tap past the pitcher. Shortstop charging in, and he fumbles the ball. Holy mackerel. Well, Sember just couldn't make the pickup on that slow ball. Top pass the pitcher, Jimmy Todd. It is now 18 to 10. Credit Bavakwa with a run batted in on it because they would not have been able to get the runner from third. And that is error number one, two, three, four, five, six. Would you believe seven by the Cubs today? Jimmy Sexton steps in. Fouls one back out of play. Manager Frank Robinson of the uh, Cleveland Indians has been very upset with his ball club's miscues in the field. Five errors, six errors, five errors, four errors. But he still thinks they've got a real good shot at the Yankees this year in that American League Eastern Division. If they can forget their fumbleitis. On paper, of course, the Yankees look so loaded that it could be a shoe in but you don't play him on paper. There's a swing. He slaps a ground ball to the shortstop. Up to second for one. The relay! Whoops! Don't get the double play. The Siena in perfect position to call it. Fielder's choice. Keeps the inning alive. The Bakwa forced at second base. And they're two gone in the ninth. Seattle has been charged with three errors today, so we've had a total of ten in the ballgame. Here's Skip Jutsey, hitting in the ninth spot of the batting order. Here's a swing and a ground ball to shortstop. He's got it. Nice going. Mike Sember feeds Kelleher perfectly. And of the ninth. One run, lead off triple. One air, one man left down. And the Cubbies beat Seattle in this one at Tempe, Arizona. The final score, the Cubs 18 and Seattle 10. 